guys, welcome to another MSI Insider live stream, our weekly live stream. And today we have a familiar guest, Martijn, welcome. Once again, thank you very much, Michiel. Martijn uh, works at AMD. He used to be an MSI Insider himself. Correct. So uh, you're actually one of the founders of this live stream. <laughs> <laughs> some time ago. Yeah, yeah, some time ago. Yeah. And now he's a guest on this live stream because AMD has got some real cool stuff to show. Um, which we will talk about today. Um, but of course, we also have a nice giveaway. So if you go to msi.com slash two slash insider, um, there you can perform certain actions. The more actions you perform, the uh, bigger chance you will have to win. Um, and we're actually giving away two Borderlands three keys and two Gears five keys. Um, these are also part of the AMD bundle right now. So if you buy um, a selected model from I think both CPUs and VGA cards, um, you can actually get these games. Yeah. So pretty cool. So make sure to enter the giveaway. Um, and yeah, we, we've got a lot to talk about today. Oh, we definitely have. Yeah. So where do you want me to start? Uh, where do you want to start? Because <laughs> it, it's too much. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot going on, obviously. And, and I hope you guys already you know, uh, saw all the, the press reviews. Uh, go check them out in your regions. Um, it's a lot of fun to read through them. Uh, we've got some amazing products come to market right now. Uh, first of all, you know, with our AM4 socket uh, earlier this year with uh, a Ryzen 3rd Gen launch. Um, and recently adding to that is the Ryzen 9 3950X. So our first 16 core 32 thread CPU on a mainstream desktop socket. So I think that's a regular AM4. Regular AM4, and once again, pushing the boundaries of what's uh, possible on a mainstream desktop platform, right? <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I, I think we got some uh, benchmarks here to show you as well. If we can put them on the screen, um, then we can see the difference what we're making right now with our Ryzen 9 3950X. So the which 3800X and the 3900X you already released a couple of months ago. Correct. Um, so those are already on the market and now new on the market, the 3950X. Yes, our uh, mainstream monster, I'd like to call it. Um, so 3800X, obviously 8 cores, 16 threads. Uh, 3900X, 12 cores, 24 threads. And on top of that, our new 3950X with 16 cores, 32 threads. Um, but as you can see, if we take Take like Cinebench, for example, which is a great benchmark to show the sheer CPU performance you can mm -hmm. get from a platform. Uh, you'll notice that um, this platform is now actually capable of you know, putting out numbers which used to be on the high-end desktop platforms, right? Um, so this uh, gives us a unique scenario with all the goodness we've got from Ryzen 3rd Gen, so 7 nanometer chiplet design, um, obviously PCI Gen 4 as well, and Zen 2, the power of Zen 2. Uh, once we got up to the, uh, the standards we're now setting with the mainstream socket, we knew our third generation Threadripper had to be even better, right? Yeah, so sometimes a little bit confusing because Zen 2 is not second generation Ryzen, right? No. Because no. you have like architecture and generation, they are different from each other. So Correct. you had first generation Ryzen was Zen, just Zen. Then mm -hmm. you had Zen Plus on the second generation, and yep. now third generation Zen 2. Yep. And, um, we have this on the mainstream platform, but now also going high on desktop platform. Zen 2 is going Threadripper, so uh, yeah, I think Zen we got Zen 2 going all the way. All the way, yeah, <laughs> we, get, we got a, a nice video for that as well, uh, if we can show that uh, video. Um. So, quite an introduction. There you have it, <laughs> third gen, Threadripper, and uh, now with Zen 2 and 7 nanometer, obviously. Um, and if you now look, take a look at our full stack for 2019, you see with the introduction of Threadripper, both in the main, uh, you know, mm -hmm. in the high-end uh, desktop platform, uh, but also with our third gen Ryzen in the mainstream socket, and closing out very entry-level uh, everyday computing now with the AMD Athlon 3000G, we've completed our 3000 series stack for 2019. 
And as you can see, there's always a price point and a very, you know, uh, great performing product available for anybody out there. It, you know, depending on where you use it for, uh, you might find uh, a Ryzen 5, 7 or 9 perfect for you. But if you're a prosumer or a commercial uh, user, uh, you either go for high-end desktop or for uh, an everyday computing like a 3000G or a 3200G. Um, and you'll find various CPUs available for various workloads. Yes, I already see a question in chat. So if you have any questions, drop them in chat and um, both of us will try to answer as many as possible. Matijn from the AMD side, me of course for the motherboard side. Uh, Edwin is asking, uh, is this for gaming or for business use? And what are the business uses? So when would you be interested in buying such uh, a third gen Threadripper CPU? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, obviously Threadripper being in the high-end desktop platform is meant for prosumers, for professionals, uh, for those people who want to uh, save time by crunching numbers faster than ever, right? So whenever mm -hmm. a new CPU is, is out for them, it will immediately save them time working on their project. So it basically allows them to work on multiple projects at the same time or do different workloads at the same time. So if you only do gaming, then this is not the platform for you, right? No, if you only do gaming, Unless you're a real high-end enthusiast like myself and mm -hmm. like to, you know, uh, play around with the most high-end parts and uh, use uh, water cooling or extreme setups to cool them, uh, you'll obviously also want one of these. Uh, but normally they are mentioned, um, uh, they are purposely built for those prosumers and those uh, business cases alike. So uh, but for you can gamers, perfectly you have like game. AM4, for example, and yeah. if you also do, yeah. um, for example, both gaming and video rendering, all that stuff, then high-end desktop platform is... Yeah, if you, if you want to do it all platform and you really want something mm -hmm. that's out of this world right now and, and you already saw the bar charts with our AM4 socket, just imagine what we can do with the power of third gen Ryzen moving up to 24 cores and 32 cores. Uh, you'll uh, see so much more performance, especially from the prosumer and the professional market like uh, compiling, rendering, 3D uh, encoding, etc. Um, so you'll see so many um, more projects that you can do on a daily basis. Uh, so you should, you know, consider one of those CPUs for sure. And if you want to do gaming on the side, because, you know, you finish your job earlier, basically, because you have more time left, you can perfectly do that as well, because it harnesses the power of third gen Ryzen, basically. So, um, for example, I have here a 3800X, which is an AM4 CPU. And later on, I will show you the size of the Threadripper. So basically what yeah. we've done in the uh, 3970. This is a small CPU. This is a, a nice small CPU inside the AM4 socket. But if you use that, and if you, you know, imagine four of those CPUs inside the Threadripper part, for example, uh, you'll see the sheer performance it can deliver, but also from a gaming perspective that it takes all the goodness from the Ryzen mainstream socket all the way up to our HEDT platform as well. And this small size that you're just showing already goes up to 16 cores, right? Yes, in the same size, same shape, and in the same socket. Cool. Yeah. So Threadripper, you yeah. already mentioned it, 24 core and 32 core. Yeah, correct. We have two new models. Uh, we have from 1399, we have our Ryzen uh, Threadripper 3960X, uh, 24 cores, 48 threads, uh, a boost frequency up to 4.5 gigahertz and all packaged into 200 watts uh, TDP. Mm -hmm. So it's also got a whopping 140 megs of cache and we see a lot of performance coming from that side as well. So there's multiple uh, improvements made compared to our second generation Threadripper that really helps us out in terms of uh, how much more performance we can actually deliver in this third generation. Because and this also, cache is a lot bigger than in the previous generation. Exactly, right? yeah, exactly. And you'll already notice that in the AM4 socket where also mm -hmm. the cache sizes is majorly increased increased, uh, but this will help tremendously in, uh, you know, memory bandwidth scenarios, uh, latency lowering, etc. And, and you'll see so much more performance coming out of this once you start benchmarking it. And I think we will do something, uh, something about that as well later, right? I think that's a good uh, idea. Yeah, so when 24... So to compare the mainstream platform to the high-end desktop platform. Yeah, exactly. And so when 24 cores or 48 threads isn't enough for you yet, we also have the 3970X, um, which has 32 cores, 64 threads, uh, same uh, boost frequency up to 4.5 gigahertz and a base clock of 3.7. Um, so that's all still very close. Even the base clock is very close to the 24 core. Yeah, just imagine it's still. Usually in you see more cores than to still keep it. With Either the, the TDP goes up, up yeah. or or you lower the boost frequency and exactly. the base clock, right? And and so we manage with our uh, silicon process and obviously there's some heavy binning going on to create these CPUs. Uh, you'll see that we're capable of delivering similar base clock and boost clocks and even with the 32 the, core part. So. Thanks to Zen 2 architecture as well, because yes. with the previous architecture, you had to lower the frequencies a bit more, and now you can 
Yeah, this is where Zen 2 comes into play. And, uh, you know, I feel really humbled by uh, the fact that we work with so many skilled engineers and, and they did a tremendous job, uh, mm -hmm. you know, developing Zen and Zen Plus and Zen 2 and, you know, moving forward to that. Um, but also with the capabilities we now have with 7 nanometer, we're still the first company doing 7 nanometer right now, which allows us to create, you know, much more space for uh, transistors. And uh, you, later on, you will see a slide as well, um, you, you know, making sure that you get the idea behind Threadripper, that mm -hmm. we now made, uh, you know, great improvements over our second generation through our chiplet design, through our NUMAS, uh, direct die memory access, for example, uh, which is also able to deliver much faster performance than before. I see in chat someone is already saying, honestly, Ryzen 9 seems a bit much. <laughs> yeah, it's it really dependent on what you do, right? I can imagine if you're, uh, for example, if you do 3D rendering, stuff like that, then you want all the performance you can get yes. because it will scale to how many cores you pretty much throw at it. So Yeah, yeah um, depending on the software you use yeah. and, and, you know, if you're so a professional. So for games, yes, it's much and yeah. games will not benefit like that number, of course. But also because of Zen 2, you have the higher clock speeds, the higher IPC. Yep. So also there you will see an improvement compared to the previous generation. Correct. So lightly loaded benchmarks or lightly loaded games mm -hmm. and applications will also yeah. see the benefits from third gen Ryzen, obviously crammed into the third gen Threadripper. Um, but like you mentioned, you know, it, it's depending on where you use this part for. If your business is depending on it, if your time is money, basically, the total cost of ownership is actually to have these parts to, to be lower than any other part out there because you're saving time saving and your time, time is yeah. money, right? I mean, exactly. if you can work on four projects instead of three in an hour, you know, you will make more money in the yeah. end. Right. More output, so more output yeah. and more rendering. Yeah, sure. Oh, we have an, uh, a classic watcher. Uh, whoa, that's a long time ago when I purchased my MSI Z270 Game Pro Carbon two years back. My time was a reviewer on the MSI Gaming Channel. Oh wow, okay, <laughs> that's cool. a little while back. So like, yeah, great that you're still hanging in there, man. Yeah, yeah. Cool yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the great to see. <laughs> yeah, it's great to see that you guys are still hanging in there, and um, you know, keep feeding us the questions. If you have any, anything specific on uh, third gen Ryzen or third gen Ryzen Threadripper, uh, you know, I'm here all day, so uh, just uh, fire away. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. If we have more in chat. Uh, Nita Alexandru GG is saying, "I still love my Ryzen 5 1600. Um, great CPU. But I need a case, and I'm short with 50 euros to buy one. <laughs> just a little yeah. bit more saving." Well, it's, it's Black Friday coming up, man. Exactly. I mean, uh, just uh, Two take days a look and then, uh... at. Wow, I've already saw some amazing deals, and I think some uh, some PCI Gen 4 SSDs is also uh, coming into Black Friday with great pricing on those as well. So, uh, yeah, if you really want the latest in technology, you're now being able to uh, to afford and buy uh, those uh, PCI Gen 4 devices. I think uh, keep an eye on Black Friday if you're uh, you know interested in uh, in upgrading your system. Uh, yeah. It's a very very uh, important time to uh, as a hardware enthusiast to keep a close eye on. Uh, yeah, yeah sure. exactly. Because Ryzen 5 1600 is still quite a fast CPU. And for example, um, second generation Ryzen, um, the Zen Plus architecture, then if you already had a Ryzen 5 1600, it was just quite a small step. But now yeah. with third gen Ryzen, yeah, and especially the IPC that went up so far. Yeah. Yeah, but it's so much going on with, uh, you know, 15% IPC improvement over the previous generation, so from Zen 2 to Zen Plus, uh, but also with uh, the way we now handle 7 nanometer and our, our whole uh, improvements through PCI Gen 4, this is really a completely new platform. Cool. Um, yeah, let's continue. All right. Yeah, so um, what I did is, uh, you know, we focus on different pillars, right, for this generation. And this is also where one of the questions actually uh, touched on this a little bit. So they're like your focus points for yeah. Threadripper. Yeah, because, you know, we want to have the best of the best performance. These are the fastest desktop processors in the world right now. So uh, we'll show you a couple of benchmarks on, on the actual performance, whether it's 3D, rendering, or gaming even. Yeah. Uh, you know, we just want to show you guys what is possible on this platform if you want to do it all system. Um, but you also want, you know, a tremendous motherboard with this. And this is, I think, where MSI also delivered a really nice motherboard. I think you're, oh, you're about to show, show that something later, about definitely. that today. Um, <laughs> and obviously, you know, we want to show uh, use case scenarios like uh, Proven by Hollywood, for example, where we've also co-worked with Blur Studio uh, into helping them produce and render uh, their Terminator movie or other projects like in-game trailers and so on. So this is really to show you guys where Threadripper really sits in the market right now and is already loved for the first and second generation it had. And it's also interesting that you mentioned for a desktop computer because you already ha have even more powerful processors with even more cores than this. Yeah. 
but those are like the epic ones. They're exactly. like they're server yeah. CPUs essentially. Yeah, we right? want to give these, uh, you know, the possibility to get these in the hands of everybody. So it doesn't matter if so you're a small business. In a regular or case. If it fits, you, yeah. you can just grab one, right? And you can install it and have that, that amount of performance, which is out of this world, uh, available for, uh, you know, the prices mentioned. Uh, but, you know, if your business depends on it, we just want to make sure that everybody can get their hands on their uh, one of these CPUs. Yeah. yeah. So um, we talked about it a little bit. We touched on Zen 2, uh, third gen Threadripper. So uh, leveraging, like you mentioned, our epic uh, chiplet design. So uh, separate CCDs. So, so technology dies. from the server department pretty much now going yes. into yeah. prosumer and consumer. Yeah, so all the greatness which comes from our epic parts, we try to uh, you know, scale down as much as we can into desktop processors. And this is where the chiplet design also uh, met its uh, way into um, our third gen Threadripper, but also our third gen Ryzen with uh, separate CCDs. So mm -hmm. uh, CPU dies basically uh, connected to a single IO die, which handles PCI lanes, memory controller, and so on. And we use the Infinity Fabric, so some of you might know this, uh, the Infinity Fabric to, to power that and to you know, read, write, uh, and communicate between the separate uh, CPU dies and the I.O. die. But going by this design actually allowed us to do more cores in the AM4 socket. So this is where we came up with the 16 core and 32 threads, 3950X as well. So that's what we also see in the AM4 Ryzen 9 processors, because for example, the Ryzen uh, 5 and Ryzen 7, they're 6 and 8 core. Mm -hmm. They still use one chiplet, but if you go further, Ryzen 9, then you will have two dedicated yeah. chips where the cores are yeah, exactly. So, so later on, uh, there's a slide in here as well, I believe. Um, so Ryzen 9, for example, uh, consists of two CCDs, so CPU dies. Mm -hmm. Both of them have six cores, making up to 12 cores. Yeah. And with SMT going on, you have uh, 24 threads, right? So then you have the 3900X. The 3900X. And yeah. if you go Ryzen 9 3950X, you basically almost have two 3800Xs, so two eight core CCDs with 16 threads. Yeah. If you combine them, you have a 16 and 32 uh, core part. Correct. So that kind of architecture is now also transferring to high-end desktop platform. Yeah. Because this was not the case yet in second generation Threadripper, right? No. no. So, so this is, uh, you know, uh, like chiplet design, topology, there's more going on as well. We talked, touched a little bit about the, the cache size, the sheer cache size, mm -hmm. and we call game cache for our Ryzen 3rd gen and for our pro parts, or let's say our, uh, sorry, our Threadripper parts. Uh, you know, we have uh, these cache sizes to help really with lowering latency and handle large data sets faster. Um, and all comes together in the seven nanometer technology, which allows us not only to uh, create more core parts, but also save a significant amount of energy and have the best performance per watt processes out there right now. And you also need that, for example, with heat production, because if you have uh, processors with these kind of amounts of cores, like you just showed the chip, 16 mm -hmm. cores on a very small CPU, yep. then the energy efficiency is a big thing, right? Yeah, energy efficiency is, is one of those uh, things that really help with architectural design, but also with the combination of 7 nanometer. Because so, with an older architecture, it would simply generate too much heat to get it in such a small package. Yes, yeah, and we, we now have uh, even 65 watt parts, like the Ryzen 7 3700X, which is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU, mm -hmm. now comes in a 65 watt package, which is, I think, out of this world if you ever look at mainstream desktop CPUs with such high core counts. Um, so we needed that step to make these third-gen Threadrippers as well, to make those steps into uh, 32 cores, which we already had on the 2990WX, but now introducing you know, the performance uplift with third gen Ryzen, we needed that power of seven nanometer and Zen 2 as well. I really like this development because I really like the very small PCs and they have limited amount of cooling options. Yep. And now you can easily go eight core, 16 thread yep. with quite a small CPU cooler actually. I actually brought one. So nice. I brought uh, the Ryzen Threadripper 3970X. So, maybe so this, this is not a 65 watt TDP. This CPU, is definitely not a 65 clarify. watt TDP. <laughs> this is a, a 32 core, 64 threads part, uh, our most high end thread ripper available right now. Um, and you know what we can do? Is we can actually show this a little bit better. Come on, let's take this out of the box. So inside, there's a nice shell casing. Um, let's take it off. I'm not sure if you can see this. That's that's One. a fancy box. That's a fancy box, <laughs> and there's a really nice piece of silicon in there, right? Definitely. All, uh, coming together in this I great CPU. I already see a huge size difference to what we just saw for mainstream platform. Yeah, so what else is in the box? Well, let me 
finish this off real Looks quick. Looks a bit like the jewelry boxes, like a display oh, right. case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit luxurious, right? Yeah, yeah I get <laughs> cool. it. So if you look inside the box, let me see, there's also a bracket. So we recommend you, you to use AIO coolers for these parts. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there are some really high-end uh, air coolers out there as well, uh, but for the best experience and the most performance, we really recommend uh, AIO coolers. So, um, and what kind of radiator size should you think of? Well, a 240 such? should be okay, but a 280 is recommended for sure. Yeah, uh, nice sticker in the box as well. 240 will work if you want to be safe. Take 280. And yeah, then most of the time, you know, if you're going, let's say, a more entry level 240, you might end up being, you know, in a situation where you don't get it's all the performance yeah, you want, yeah. right? So, uh, also in the box is this. Uh, um, screwdriver basically which helps you uh, connect the CPU to uh, to the socket and later these are... on we will also demonstrate yeah let's uh, let's install this man it's uh, it's great fun right I mean let me put this in the box real quick let's take out the CPU because I think the people are mostly interested in that right um, so the like box is cool but it's yeah so it's all about the inside guys. you got you, you got to open right. this up if you cut this one like that you gotta. Uh. Spoofboss is already saying in chat. Just look at the size of that thing. Yeah. So you gotta open it. Be ca cautious. Obviously, you don't want to damage it. So here it is, sitting real nice. Um, so as you can see, let me hold this in front a little bit. Oh, this is a different one. Look at the uh -huh. size difference it's, it's here. It's so cute and tiny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? I mean, there's so much. Uh, going on right here in the CPU. So if you want to open this one on the side, there's actually a ledge here. If you push this up, it will unlock. So take out this bracket and simply, um, let me move it like this, simply slide it out. So you also notice that this is uh, inside a nice bracket. Oh, sorry. Um, which you still want to use. So don't remove this bracket because you need this when you slide it in your CPU, uh, in your uh, motherboard. So here you have the Ryzen Threadripper 3970X. So also the orange part will be under your CPU cooler. Yes, Just leave this on. Definitely don't take leave it that off. on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's part of the installation mechanism. Yeah. So there we have it, the 3970X. And it's also interesting about this CPU when comparing to, to AM4, for example. Mm -hmm. If you flip it around, I'm used to seeing pins there on AMD CPUs. Yeah, so this is LGA. And what's uh, normal for these um, CPUs is being on LGA. There are so many pins in the socket. So what we uh, do is we put the pins on the motherboard instead of so the let's CPUs. Let's flip it around. Just to make sure that it doesn't damage, right? So yeah, you can show that in the close-up. So it's uh, silky smooth basically going on. So let's on. show it from the side. You see no the, pins sticking out of no, there, like uh, you would see on AM4. Yeah, Ryzen 3rd Gen has the pins on the CPU. Maybe and we can show the other CPU so we can see the difference. Yeah. So there so, you see the CPU, the pins are sticking outside of the CPU. Yeah. And for these kind of CPUs, the pins are on the motherboard. And they're yeah, essentially touching the yeah. contact points on the CPU. Just imagine there's 4,094 of them. Um, and you don't want to have these produced on the CPUs because, you know... Uh, <laughs> it gets they, too they, small, they, right? If you touch these with your hands, you know, they will bend and break or whatever, and then you will have a faulty uh, CPU. So yeah. uh, keeping that on the motherboard and making sure that you put a nice cover on the motherboard, there's less uh, possibilities of damaging that, right? Yeah. Uh, so we wanted to ensure that uh, these parts are working flawlessly out of the box and with less risk of damaging them. Oh, we have a spicy question from NMX117. Can we expect Ryzen 4th Gen next year? You can expect anything, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's something uh, we can't discuss right now. And obviously, uh, we're really thrilled to discuss 3rd Gen uh, Ryzen Threadripper right now. Um, and anything coming out later on is, is you know, there's Still roadmaps, NDA, right? there is roadmaps, uh, and, you know, and, and we also take a look at the market. So when, when do we think the time is right to, uh, to launch new products? So <laughs> I could honestly not even answer that question. So just wait and you will see. Yep. <laughs> uh, Sen is asking, what kind of motherboards are suitable for this processor? Yeah, That's so, an interesting question. Yeah, so there's uh, TRX40. This is the chipset. This is a new chipset to harness all the power of uh, Ryzen 3rd Gen Threadripper. Uh, there are multiple reasons why we had to go to a new chipset. One of them is PCI Gen mm -hmm. 4, obviously, uh, but also the sheer amount of performance going through a socket. Uh, we needed a new scalable chipset as well uh, and a new scalable socket. So I think you have some, uh, some nice motherboards uh, today yeah, to show we'll as show well. It. Yeah, yeah uh, and one of those is, uh, you know, showing off... Um, uh, the sheer performance we can deliver with this once we pop the, one of these bad boys in. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, you know, 
still a reason to keep X399 on the market. I mean, uh, people are still in, in their upgrade path, maybe not, uh, they are still using a 1900X, for example, and if they still want a 32 core part, they can look for great deals on the 2990 WX, for Especially example. Especially with Second. Black Friday and Cyber Monday coming up. Oh, I bet there will be several uh, really interesting deals coming out uh, on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So keep um, an eye out. Yeah, and, and <laughs> so, so we really had to go for a new socket, and, and we, you know, obviously when we set out uh, to make these parts, we're never setting out to, uh, you know, make, forcing people to new sockets. But like AM4, uh, we said we were going to do four or five years on the socket, and we're in the fourth year right now, if mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, so even though you have Ryzen 5 1600, somebody uh, mentioned, yeah. you can still upgrade that uh, motherboard. Depends on the model you have and if there's a BIOS available, obviously. But you can still fit in a Ryzen 9 3950X in that. So that's, uh, I think, an awesome achievement. But for the high-end desktop platform, it's really something like we mentioned. Further, to progress to, further yeah. and to make sure that all the professionals actually get the best of the best in, you know, not just performance, but also in technology leadership, we had to, uh, you know, for scalability purposes, also introduce uh, socket uh, STRX4 or the chipset TRX40, TRX40, just to, you know, harness all those new PCI lanes as well, because you get a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I see a question in chat. Can someone tell me the name of the monitor on the left? Actually, these monitors are the same. <laughs> So the one on the right, one on the left, doesn't matter. Uh, they are the Optics MPG 27 CQ. Yes, Eric, they are the same. <laughs> we have somebody looking very strange <laughs> at the monitors yeah. right now. Are they the same? Eric thought they were two different monitors. No, yeah. they're the same. <laughs> Optics MPG 27 CQ, they are. Yeah. Good question. <laughs> Good question, indeed. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think we got yeah. something on the screen right now. Um, going back to that socket question. Um, maybe we can show it on the screen. I'm not sure if we can see that on the stream. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that we also did for third gen Ryzen is obviously support quad channel memory, which is like the standard right now in a high-end desktop platform, right? Uh, up to eight DIMMs. But now we also support those 32 gigabyte dual rank uh, DIMMs as well. And you can so also do that on AM4, right? So if you have third gen uh, Ryzen on AM4, you mm -hmm. can also go up to 128 gigabytes, right? Yes, yes, for sure. Um, so uh, these obviously have eight DIMM slots, so you can go 256 yeah, gigabytes right go now. Double. So officially supported, and we're still only uh, the only brand supporting ECC memory from the CPU perspective. So uh, it depends on the motherboard manufacturers to actually mm -hmm. enable this and validate, etc. Uh, but the CPU definitely supports ECC as well. And um, also very interesting, quad channel memory, because that's also a difference in between uh, the mainstream platform and yeah, that, that's one of the reasons to uh, move from a mainstream socket to a high-end desktop is because of the sheer memory bandwidth you get from a high-end desktop platform. Yeah. Um, so at the bottom of this slide, you'll see that uh, you know we see right now in the market very interesting kits uh, flying around uh, at, at you know great pricing. For example, uh, 64 gigs DDR4 3600 is great for anybody who's doing rendering, uh, compiling, and so on. Mm -hmm. That's a great kit. And this is a good time to buy. Yeah, exactly. RAM, and and 3600 is like the sweet spot we see yeah. right now if you want the maximum performance. Uh, but if you want more size, like 128 gigs, mm -hmm. uh, we see that in certain applications uh, where size size really matters instead of the, the speed of the kit, uh, you would want to go for a 128 DDR4 3200 uh, memory kit. So DDR4 uh, 3200 is supported by uh, basic uh, level support. So third gen Threadripper supports DDR4 3200. Mm -hmm. But obviously, similar to Ryzen third gen, uh, you can go up to 4000, maybe 5000 megahertz yeah. as well in these kits because uh, the memory control is quite similar to uh, Ryzen third gen. Yeah. Um, and it also depends on what you do, right? Sometimes the size of the memory is more important, sometimes the yep. speed. So really dependent on what kind of programs do you use, yep. um, Correct. which one you should use. Um, we have a question from um, Get Dog Official. Get Dog Official. <laughs> For gaming and streaming, uh, to stream on multiple platforms at once, which chip and motherboard would you recommend for a build to have smooth streams without bad latency? Uh, looking right now to build my first desktop uh, and retire my Apache Pro laptop. I'm on a $1,500 budget and looking for something that I can upgrade um, parts on as I go on. 
Well, it's a great question. First, um, you know, it all depends on do you do any uh, content creation afterwards? So you're gaming, you're streaming. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very capable AM4 socket for that. So a Ryzen 3900X, Ryzen 9, or a Ryzen 9 3950X is a great CPU to do uh, handle all those multiple workloads at the same time, um, where you can still fully enjoy your game and your stream at the same time, giving that high quality stream you want. Yeah. Um, if you also plan on doing uh, a lot of content creation, then the high-end desktop platform is very interesting. But given your budget, I would definitely try and aim for a Ryzen 9 3900X. If yeah. your $1,500 budget is, is you know, really uh, a solid budget, you don't want to go over. So, yeah. yeah, then you have 12 cores, which is... Plenty. Yeah, yeah. plenty for most uh, content creation that people would do at home. Maybe yeah. in a professional environment, of course, then uh, more is always welcome. Yeah. Um, but also Ryzen 9 3900X, Quite high clock speeds also for gaming. Yep. Very good. Boost frequency is very high, whether it's yeah. single threaded or multi threaded. Um, you'll have uh, plenty of performance to play with, especially when you're talking about gaming and, and streaming. Um, yeah. Another interesting question from NMX117 Which one is better, Ryzen 9 3900X or Threadripper 2920X? I was just uh, having me to ask, what, what is my favorite kit? Like, yeah. <laughs> And this so, is also very dependent on what you do. Exactly. It, right? It's similar yeah. to my previous answer. If, if it really depends on your workload, right? And I think uh, a Ryzen 9, and that's what one of the first slides in this uh, today's live stream already showed, is that you know these lines between mainstream socket and HEDT are actually becoming a little bit vague with all these new products we're pushing out with higher core counts, even mm -hmm. on a mainstream AIM-4 socket. So, so it's, it's kind really of hard difficult. to say which one is better, yeah. because one yeah. has got uh, is more suitable for um, workstation use, like video rendering and stuff. Yeah. Of course, you have on the high end desktop platform, you have more PCI Express lanes. Mm -hmm. So, if you use multiple graphics cards, then you would benefit from that. On the other hand, the Ryzen 9 third gen has a higher IPC, higher clock speed. So, if you do more gaming and stuff yeah. like that, then that will be the better choice. If, so you, if you, yeah, if you don't want to have bandwidth starved scenarios, you would actually yeah. go for the 29, uh, 20x. Uh, that makes sense because you're using those applications exactly. that really demand that you know big bandwidth, memory bandwidth, uh, or those multiple PCI lanes, which it has over an AM4 socket. Yeah. Um, but if you, uh, but if you're going for one graphics card and one SSD. And, and maybe one PC. tablet to draw or something like, uh, yeah. you know, your input devices. Then you uh, don't need that many PCI Express No, it, it really no. depends on your use case, but it's a great question. But yeah, I find it hard, you know, selecting one of my favorite kids, basically. <laughs> yeah. uh, Nasra is asking, where is that dude with the cool hairdo? That must be Ja. No, no, me. <laughs> uh, Eric thinks it's him. I think yeah. it's Ja because he had a fight with a lawnmower. Um, but it looked really cool. Oh, uh, I thought he fell off a, off a stair or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I'm job. kidding. He's, he's got great hair, man. Yeah. He'll be back in another stream, I think, next week already. Okay. I'm not sure, but uh, I think next week you will see Jai again. All right. Uh, let me see if we have more questions. I think you have uh, maybe some games to give away, didn't you? Uh, oh, that's actually a good idea. Right? Let's maybe mm. do that first. So if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Um, there you can enter the giveaway, you can perform certain actions. The more you perform, the bigger chance we'll have to win. If you already signed up for the giveaway, you will automatically um, will be enrolled in all the draws. So uh, you don't have to uh, apply again if you already did so, but didn't win the first time. Um, we're giving away two keys of Borderlands 3 and two uh, keys for Gears 5. And that's actually the sequel of the Gears of War games, right? Yeah, I haven't played it, but it's uh, it, lo it looks really great. I mean, uh, yeah, I, still I, I still need some time to try it. I actually. know it was usually popular yeah. on Xbox, but now also yeah. on PC, so pretty yeah. cool to check it out. And we have our first winner. Um, so the first winner for, and this is a Borderlands 3 key, is nickname is Snog. Congratulations, S-N-O-C-C. -C. You won a Borderlands 3 key. We will email it to you in the coming days and have fun playing. Congratulations. Congratulations. So if you haven't participated yet, please do so. Uh, and let's get back into it. And I have a spicy question from Animax again. Are there heating I spicy heating? <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Jalapeno. Are, <laughs> Jalapeno. Are there heating issues with the threat ripper? 
Well, it depends on uh, what on you call you cool heating it. issue. If, yeah. if, if things are really cool and you want things to get really hot, then yeah, of course, there's the heating issue. But no, these <laughs> products are running really cool for, you know, the sheer amount of performance that they're delivering. Um, of and, course, and don't put like a very small air cooler on it. No, but these are meant for high-end desktop platforms, yeah. right? And, and the general consensus is you have decent cooling on those uh, builds you do for those purposes. And that's uh, also purposes. why these don't come with the cooler inside the box, right? Exactly. And, and we, we know, you enthusiasts, you always know better, right? So if we include some cooler in the box you have your brand preference or uh, your yeah. uh, cooler already uh, it's a, it's which you bought from like a previous generation when i get like a cpu cooler included in a box like you throw it on the side and never touch it at least i never touch it yeah. and i always use an aftermarket cooler so i think it's for me it's a positive thing that it's not included in a box because it lowers the price a bit and you can just decide on your own CPU cooler. Yeah, and that's why we went with, you know, the the performance we're delivering with these parts, uh, we recommend an AIO, really. Yeah. And, and that's something really hard to ship. As you know, as a motherboard yeah. manufacturer, it's also Definitely. really difficult to ship anything liquid-cooled. Uh, and it's also with quite expensive. So if you, yeah. if you would include it, and someone would, for example, prefer custom water cooling, yeah. then that person will also have to pay extra for an all-in-one water cooler that yeah. he or she will not use. No, I, I think we uh, let the enthusiasts and the people who buy this decide. They, they definitely know what kind of cooler they need and want. And uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, their uh, fun and games to uh, set up the perfect platform, which they think they didn't spend money on something that they won't use, right? Yeah. yeah. And talking about custom water cooling, we have something cool to show, right? Yeah, I've uh, I've also brought some stuff. Uh, maybe it's it's nice to talk about. You we know, talked about all-in-one water cooling. Yeah, I think we got that here as well somewhere. Um, but if you uh, we have are one into right here in front. Oh yeah, we have one in in the front. So normally um, you would go for an AIO cooler, but if you're really uh, into custom water cooling, like uh, myself, for example, you would use one of these ba bad boys right here, uh, which is now capable of supporting the TRX40 platform as well. So this is like um, a cooling block specifically for that socket. And the yeah. TR4 socket And the TR4 also is the... supported because yeah. the socket compatibility for those coolers remains the same. So if you um, own a cooler already for TR4, you can directly take that cooler with you to STR4. Yes, for, yes. Uh, just socket. check if the, the wattage is up to the TDP, right? Yeah. Because we're moving from 250 to 280 watts. So if it TDP. offers enough cooling performance, then you can just use the cooler you were already using. Yeah, and then if you then uh, couple that with uh, one of these, um, I think you can build a really nice uh, gaming rig or a high-end desktop rig where you really want to uh, go full water cooling. Um, I think, oh, let me move it here. I think you have uh, so much fun building it. So if you're ever uh, considering building one of these systems uh, with going custom water cooling, custom loops, uh, definitely give it a try. This high-end desktop platform is definitely really one of the platforms that you will get the most uh, performance in return when you uh, treat it with decent cooling, right? And with this, you can even go a step further, right? Because when you have an all-in-one water cooler, you, can, you already have very big ones, like 360 millimeter. But if you do a custom loop, you can also use multiple radiators at the same time. Yeah, I can show this in the close-up real quick. So, yeah, you can do uh, multiple radiators, and you can see it nicely fits the CPU. So the size of the coolers are getting, uh, you know, big CPU, uh, big block. Yeah, and, and <laughs> it should fit it rather than a round uh, CPU uh, cooler for an AM4 socket, for example. So I think it's a nice testament of uh, what, what people can do. We have someone very enthusiastic in the chat. Um, I saw the question, so once is enough, you can just put it there, <laughs> but sometimes we're in the middle of a sentence. Uh, is there any AMD uh, graphics card which can bottleneck this new CPU? Wow, that's a great question. I haven't tried that, but uh, I'm sure our uh, like 5700 XT is really, really fast. It's on the PCI Gen 4. Yeah, but this CPU will not be a bottleneck. No, right? I don't think that, that it will, but I haven't tested it myself. Um, it's always a chicken and egg story, right? Yeah. Whether you bring out a new platform, a new socket, etc., or when the graphics cards are ahead. You know, we've s s seen that uh, several times in, uh, in our history, mm -hmm. uh, where the graphics cards were actually bottlenecked by the CPU. But just trust me, the third gen Ryzen Threadripper will not bottleneck any And it's, it's also PCI dependent on card. your settings, because if you play like low resolution, very low settings, mm -hmm. then your CPU will be the bottleneck earlier. If you do the other way around, very, uh, very high settings, very high resolution, then your GPU will be the bottleneck. So yeah. you can balance it yourself. I, I think, you know, in, in terms of advice, if you 
purchase this kind of platform and you play games, you'll probably not end up playing lower resolution than 1080p anyway, right? So I do, esports style. Yeah, <laughs> esports style perhaps. But I, I, I think I prefer the way it plays. Like okay, you, you don't okay. get distracted by the visuals. But even stuff, esports so. titles, we have some benchmarks for that as well, uh, which are great on the Ryzen 3rd Gen and the Ryzen 3rd Gen mm -hmm. Threadripper. So uh, it doesn't really matter if you go high core counts nowadays yeah. because it's got all the goodness from a 3rd Gen Ryzen basically built in the Threadripper as well. So there's a, a huge improvement over our second generation in terms of gaming. Mm -hmm. we, we knew, we got feedback on that, uh, and which we heavily improved on on third gen Ryzen Threadripper. So even lightly loaded applications and gaming will run so much better on the third gen Ryzen. Yeah, for sure. Um, Bane is saying, I'm probably going to be getting uh, MSI X570 Game Pro Carbon, but I haven't decided on Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 3000 series. So yeah, that's very much dependent on what you want to do on it. Do you also want to do rendering tasks? Wait. Then you will benefit from the extra course that Ryzen 7 will give Wait you. Wait on Black Friday. <laughs> Wait on Black Friday. <laughs> Maybe you got a great deal on Ryzen 7. Then, uh, you yeah. know, if, if that's in your budget, just out of your reach right it now. It might get close to the, the normal price of the Ryzen 5, and then it's yeah. a no-brainer, I would say. Yeah, or, or even if you're, uh, you know, considering uh, your budget and you still want that core count, you might even want to take a look at the 2000 series on Black yeah. Friday, right? Uh, I imagine there will be some great, great deals out there. So. Yeah, because if you do a lot of video rendering, for example, uh, 2700X from the previous generation will still outperform, for example, the 3600 because it has more cores. Yeah. But on the other hand, if you do more gaming, then you will benefit more from the higher IPC. It all from depends the third, on yeah. your use case yeah. in the end. Exactly. And, and if you want to do it all CPU, then you will go for a Threadripper. If you want to do it all platform, which stays you know, a little bit within reach in terms of your budget, if you're not a professional or a prosumer, you will go for an AM4 like a Ryzen 3, 5, 7, or 9, exactly. uh, which is plenty of, uh, of performance for you then. Uh, yeah. Um, let me see, Animex is also asking, how much FPS can we get with uh, RX 5700 XT with Threadripper 3rd Gen on AAA titles? That's, That's actually easy. something we can show later on, right? It's over 9,000. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, I think we got something on that as well. Um, it's later on in this presentation or is it? So it's later on. It's yeah. later on. So we, we will we show will, you we later will. On. It's a great question. Uh, we have some content on that. So bear with us, uh, Animax 117. Uh, we will uh, definitely show you uh, the performance on third gen Ryzen and third gen Ryzen Threadripper in terms of uh, 1440p gaming. We have some uh, info on that. So it's a, it's a great gaming CPU as well. Mr. Phone Click is saying, are you going to show us one or more motherboards? Yes, we will definitely show you a very new fancy TRX40 motherboard. So hang on. Um, Ashish Jaswal is asking which model will you recommend for best output uh, from this CPU or GPU combination? That's very much dependent on what you prefer. Like if, you, if you're really into AAA titles, you want the best graphics, go for a high resolution, for example, on one, 144 hertz. Mm -hmm. if, you want, if you prefer, like me, the eSports titles, 1080p, 244 hertz uh, is the way to go. Um, but then you usually play on lower settings to get really the maximum FPS. So it's, it really depends on what you prefer, what you play. Yeah. Um, for eSports titles, I would always say get the highest uh, FPS possible with a very high refresh rate and maybe a little bit lower resolution. If you prefer eye candy, then go 1440p and... Uh, yeah. yeah, the great thing is with third gen Ryzen and third gen Ryzen Threadripper, with all those high boost clocks we now have, you can go wrong with any of those CPUs, basically. So if you're an eSports player, yeah, exactly. you should also you know, benefit from great yeah, high it, FPS on that as it's well. It's fine for both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, very interesting question here from Pranav Patil. I will buy a system in the future. Which AMD processor is good for artificial intelligence and machine learning? Well. This is also where the third gen Ryzen Threadripper will and be very... They say you sound a little bit weird. Maybe yeah, I'm, I'm, trying, uh, I'm trying to fix it, man. Something... Uh, testing one, two. Let us know if it's better now. Yeah, please let us know. If it's still cracking, then... Uh, yeah. So artificial intelligence and machine learning. That's an interesting... Yeah, and this is where these uh, products actually help out as well. Uh, you can do a lot with them as well. Because that's um, where you really need... Processing High core power, counts, right? yeah. processing power, multi-threaded processing power, and you know anything to do with rendering, compiling, workstation, um, you know deep learning scenarios. You would want a high core count processor. And so. as he's talking about the future, 
later future. on you have something nice to tease there's a nice future for so, yeah for, us, for sure yeah sure um so yeah let's move on to these uh first a couple of slides a little bit then we uh, we get that out of the way and we get to do some fun stuff right Definitely. we have some live demos have also some cool set stuff up to show. So. Yeah, so uh, we already talked about where the AM4 socket, so if you look at those three bars on the left side of the slide, you'll see that our AM4 socket is also very capable of handling uh, HEDT-like performance, right? So we already saw like a stack with the first three, and now you see yeah. how they compare to... Yeah, so Threadripper. adding to that is our Ryzen Threadripper 3960X 24-core part, and our Ryzen Threadripper 3970X are 32-core part you will see that you know the sheer performance difference that is now generating, we're raising the bar on the high-end desktop platform, right? There is nothing out there that can deliver the similar amount of performance available on the desktop platform, for sure, right? Uh, Baltic Seal saying 1440p is gorgeous. I switched from 1080p about six months ago and there is no way back. Um, yeah, it's, it's also the other way around. If you're used to 240 hertz, then it's also harder to get used to lower refresh rates again. So it's always a bit, where is your do preference? You notice, do you notice when you play 240 over 144 hertz? Yes, I definitely yeah. notice. Okay, cool. um, but the step is not as big for me as, for example, 60 to 144. No, that's a, that's a huge difference. difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in general gaming, yes, I notice it. But in eSports, it does give you that edge. So then, yes, I would go for two, 240 there. Okay. If you're going for eye candy, then 1440p definitely the way to go. Um, 2GZGE is saying, is it worth to buy a screen with G-Sync or FreeSync support? Yes, definitely. Um, especially if you play AAA titles, they can be quite demanding usually. So if you dip below the maximum refresh rate of your monitor, and especially if you have a high refresh rate monitor, like 144 or even 240 hertz, if you go below that, it will sync and it will still feel smoother than when you don't have uh, adaptive, uh, adaptive sync technology in your monitor. So definitely um, an interesting technology. Uh, let me see if we have more questions. Um, There's plenty of people in chat. So yeah. Yeah, it's nice. ABMNS production is asking, can AMD make sure that most retailers respect the MSRP prices because Threadripper 3000 um, is overpriced in a lot of countries? But that's not really within your power, right? No, and it's it's also setting in, right? So, I mean, uh, this, this just got released. So yeah. uh, prices are setting in. You know, sometimes there are some adjustments going on on the website. Sometimes they're higher up in pre-order eras, uh, those kind of moments where pricing is a little bit weird and off. Yeah. Uh, there could be some mistakes from distributors or whatever. So we expect them uh, to be more And it's a recommended price. It's not really yeah. something you can define no. because the retailer will also play a and part it in it. depends on the regions. Exactly. And so it's, it's nothing you know we can do about Texas it. Texas as well, because yeah. that differs from region to region. So in, yeah. in one country, it might be a lot more expensive than another country because you have a lot more Correct. tax on it. So. Yeah, I think hard, hard to influence. It's the same for MSI. Yeah. It's always, you, you can control certain parts, but you cannot control it completely. So yes, of course, within regions, within countries, you can see price differences. Yeah, and we worked hard to get more supply out there because, you know, uh, when third gen Ryzen first launched, uh, we knew it was a good product, but we really underestimated the popularity the demand, of it yeah. because the demand was so high for a Ryzen 9 3900X. So we definitely wanted to make sure that there's plenty of Ryzen third gen Threadrippers out there and there's plenty of Ryzen 9 3950s uh, out there on November 25. Uh, so we're working around the clock to get av more availability into the market as soon as possible. And uh, there's a lot coming, so. Cool. Yeah, so content creation. Yeah, going back to the, one of the previous questions, like who are these parts for, right? And, and who should use those parts? Uh, and they're like the main pro? target group for this, right? Yes. Because they use so much processing power, power in different kind of applications, yeah. video rendering, 3D rendering, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, so if you look at it generationally, gener from generation to generation, you'll see uh, our 24-core Ryzen Threadripper 3960X is already capable of sometimes even beating our 32-core 2990WX. So this is the sheer performance increase you get from a third-gen Ryzen over a second-gen Ryzen. Um, so if you look at these bar charts, you'll see that so much more performance from a 32-core even. Uh, whether you're using CAD or architecture, if you're a software developer compiling, uh, whether you do 3D rendering and you know using CAD and so on, 
or you're mastering and encoding videos, there's so much time to be saved and so much, uh, you know, uh, time to win back and work on multiple projects uh, that these parts are really raising the bar and, and you know, making it um, very, very interesting for those people working in those industries. And here you also see the architecture coming in because the gray bar is um, the 2990WX, so that's a 32-core CPU from the previous generation. Yep, and now you already see that the 3960X which is only a 24 core, can already outperform it because of the newer architecture. Zen 2, 7 nanometer again, there's yeah. so much going on. Like the NUMA is now direct die memory access, which is a lot better than the previous generation. So there's so many reasons why a third generation uh, Threadripper is so much faster than a second generation in some, uh, some cases, yes. And one of those cases, Gaming. Yeah, we already touched on it. Um, 1440p, so we took this slide and really wanted to show you guys that there's, you know, Triple A gaming, doesn't matter what type of game you play, uh, the Ryzen 3rd Gen Threadripper is so much better than the previous generation and so much better than any HEDT processor out there. Because, you know, normally an HEDT processor is not the processor you would choose mm -hmm. for a gaming scenario, and right? Usually they, they used to be a little bit weaker in comparison Correct. because they were clocked a little bit lower and that impacts your gaming performance and yeah. your IPC as well. Yeah, because of different uh, purposes, different use cases. So, uh, and, but now with the power of 3rd Gen Ryzen, which basically is coming from the mainstream socket, and those higher frequencies, we're now seeing so much better gameplay coming out on the third gen Ryzen Threadrippers as well. So this mm -hmm. is really a do-it-all platform right now. So we already had the question, what can you expect for a uh, performance increase with the new uh, third gen uh, Ryzen Threadripper CPUs? It can, it, of course, it differs from title to title um, because some titles are more CPU bound, some are more GPU bound. Um, but there can be quite an increase in, in certain times. Yeah, and here we looked at a resolution which is commonly used in an HEDT setup, right? So 1440p, mm -hmm. you know, really ultra graphics level settings, um, or 1080p with ultra graphics, uh, what, whatever you want. Um, these uh, Ryzen 3rd Gen Threadrippers will deliver high FPS for you. Um, in the previous generation, you also had a gaming mode on your CPU. How is that in this generation? Yeah, so game mode is uh, not uh, enabled by default uh, because it's no longer necessary because third gen Ryzen already tackles that problem uh, a little bit different than mm -hmm. the second generation Threadripper did. Um, but it's still an, uh, a possibility for you to enable. So if you have those titles, uh, which are like five to 10 years old, and you still want to play that, but so it doesn't- So they're not optimized for high It high doesn't core boot counts, because of yeah. the high core count. So it, it, it doesn't boot over 16 cores, for example. Mm -hmm. You can enable game mode and it will half your core count, making it able uh, for you to play that game again and once again, enjoy your favorite title. So, so it doesn't temporarily, matter. It will just shut off a couple of cores yep. and you'll be able to go again. Okay. Yeah, okay. exactly. New topology. And this is probably a little bit technical for most people. So, yeah, so let's make this as easy as possible. Yeah, so <laughs> we touched on the CCDs or the CPU dies inside one of these CPUs. So if you uh, take one of these CPUs, there's multiple chips inside below the lid, basically. So um, below there, there's actually four dies from the CPU. So on the 24 core so part- So that's a chiplet Chiplet design, design yeah. yeah. So it's a 24 core part, you have four of six CPU dies, right? Mm -hmm. Makes sense, four times six is 24. If you then add at SMT, you have 48 threads. Um, if you, in the case of the 3970X, you have four eight core dies. So basically almost same like four 3800Xs in one CPU packed in all together. Um, these are connected to a 12 nanometer uh, IO die, which harnesses all the PCI lanes, all the connectivity, um, the memory access, um, and each CPU die now has direct memory access to the IO die. So a one-to-one -one through Infinity Fabric uh, memory access, so read and write speeds, uh, but also latency is far lower now, which is great, which will give you so much more performance over a second generation Threadripper part. So the sure. same as we saw for mainstream platform with second generation, third generation Ryzen, mm -hmm. also the lower latency is the higher bandwidth, same will go now for Threadripper CPUs. Yes. Yeah, so all the goodness from Ryzen 3rd Gen, and as you can see, it's got, uh, because of 7 nanometer, we also reduced our uh, Infinity Fabric on package power with 27%, which actually allowed us, because the power was lower, it allowed us to enable more frequency, right? Mm -hmm. Because frequency is is uh, consuming power. Yeah. Uh, the higher you go in, in memory, uh, sorry, in uh, CPU frequency. So this is where a portion of that increase came from, basically. 
Um, obviously, topology awareness is still there, so the best cores are automatically detected by Windows and optimized for lightly loaded uh, traffic. Mm -hmm. um, and you will automatically see uh, great performance coming out of that. Uh, it's already enabled by Windows 1903. Uh, so I think everybody already is running 1903 if you're if an you enthusiast. If you have automatic update on. Yes. Yeah, but I would definitely recommend if you get yeah. a third-gen Ryzen or a Ryzen Threadripper to actually start from 1903 or newer. I think the 1909 just came out. Um, but you'll be able to uh, you know, benefit from um, a better topology awareness, faster clock ramping as well. So the difference between idle speed and turbo frequency or boost frequencies, uh, you will see so much lower uh, latency in that as well. So it's basically like a car. When you put your foot down, uh, you'll immediately increase in speed, right? That's yeah. what you want. And you don't want it to take two seconds before you start accelerating, right? That's with my diesel. But nowadays, <laughs> with electric cars, it's a little bit faster. Exactly. So that's a, that's a great comparison, but that's how it basically works. Yeah, in, in very simplicity uh, uh, way yeah. of saying that. Yeah. So we already shortly touched on it because third gen uh, Ryzen Threadripper uses a new platform, so a new chipset. Um, we'll also show a new motherboard later on. Mm -hmm. um, let's shortly touch on this platform because some things you had to change compared to the previous. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, it's, it's possible to take this one full screen. I'm not sure, but um, there's a lot of details on this slide. Uh, and as you can see, there's so many PCI lanes to play with this generation. And remember, these are all PCI Gen 4 lanes. So you get 72 so that's usable. also a difference compared to X399. Yeah. And because that was still PCI Express Gen 3. Yeah, and, and what it basically allows us is because of the increase in PCI lanes and also moving from PCI Gen 3 to Gen 4, is that we now have quadrupled our bandwidth over our second generation Threadripper parts. So uh, you'll see um, you know, how many USB ports you can actually put on a motherboard. I mean, you as a motherboard manufacturer, you'll see so many more opportunities come to play when building these high-end desktop motherboards. You can simply put more on there. <laughs> yeah, you can put so many M.2 slots on there, so many USB ports, all fast, and that's all also very important, you want to remain uh, fast, right? Um, and they're all connected from the CPU to the chipset using an internal PCI for uh, lanes as well, so times eight. So the internal connection is also really fast, uh, and it all delivers up to 132, uh, 33 gigabytes of bandwidth, concurrent bandwidth, which you can use at the same time. So for example, if you use multiple graphics cards, M.2 device at the same time, but also use your, uh, your tablet for drawing and, and 3D rendering and so on at the same time, you can all use that without being bandwidth constrained or starved. Right. Yeah. Um, so there's so many opportunities to uh, to you know create so many different motherboards for so many different people, um, and you can just um, you know imagine the number of USB ports and SATA ports on the motherboard right now. We're n we're not holding back anything here. <laughs> <laughs> and that gives a lot of options because um, yeah, already X399 was in PCI Express lanes. You had a lot of options already because you have so many more lanes on a mainstream platform. Yep. But now Gen 4 you're doubling bandwidth as well. So that now, for example, in the past, you might have needed um, two lanes for a certain thing. Now you would only need one lane to get the same bandwidth from yeah. there. So essentially, it gives you more options as well. Yeah, so that's the reason why we also uh, will have TRX40 as the new platform. Uh, it quadruples the bandwidth over the previous generation, so we needed to make a new socket, really. Uh, the way the pins are actually allocated is also slightly different compared to X399 because of the difference in CPU architecture. Uh, and obviously, with PCI Gen 4 support and our scalability options going down the line in the future, probably, uh, it really demanded a new socket. So that's where TRX40 came in. However, if you still want 32 cores and you're still on X399, you can perfectly upgrade to a 2990WX. That's still a great CPU. And now with Black Friday, maybe <laughs> even cheaper. I saw yeah. a question about Black Friday as well. If MSI will also have Black Friday, um, not specifically us, but of course, watch your local retailer because they might sell certain MSI products at a huge discount. Um, that's really up to the retailers. We don't sell the products themselves. We sell them to local shops and there you can buy them. Um, so check with your local retailer what kind of uh, actions they will have with Black Friday. And I'm pretty sure if you do some searching on the internet, you will be able to find some very nice deals also on different kind of MSI products. Our partners have cooked up something really nice, I think, uh, for this coming Black Friday. Definitely. Saw some, definitely. Uh, a lot of activity. So uh, <laughs> Talking about cool products, because a new platform means new motherboards. Um, but first, let's draw another winner for a giveaway. Sure. So we have... Um, Shall we do a Gears 5 now? Yeah. We had a Borderlands 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do it one by 5. one. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 
So while Eric is drawing a winner, if you haven't participated yet, go to msr.com slash two slash insider to participate in the giveaway. See different acts you can perform. The more you do it, the bigger chance you'll have to win. If you already participated, you will also be part of this drawing and the next ones as well. Um, and our next winner in the giveaway is... Ooh, difficult name. That one's for you, Martijn. <laughs> Which one is it? The second one? The second one. Zdravko Petrov. Yeah, Stavko the... Petrov, congratulations, you won a Gears 5 code. Um, so have fun playing it. And uh, for everyone who didn't win, good luck in the next drawings. So Go enjoy to... Gears 5, man, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we talked about CPUs, but of course, new platform means new motherboards. And that's where we come in. Sure. And we... Let's show them. We made something we think is really nice. So help out? let me hand it over to you because oh, you really? have a nice close-up cam in front of you. <laughs> let me show this one. All right. Oh, let's move it yeah, back it, a little bit. It's quite big. Yeah. It fits in a regular desktop. But it's an extended it ATX motherboard. Yeah, but it fits the CPU is also big, right? That's true. That's true. <laughs> oh, even further to the back, I think. Wow. So this is our new Creator TRX40 motherboard. Yeah, maybe flip it to the side so it fits. Then you got like 69. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean like yeah, this? Like that. Yeah, sure, we can do that. But yeah, then... that's better. Really? Okay, if you want it. So this is our new Creator TRX40 motherboard. So this is our um, highest end motherboard for the new TRX40 platform. Um, yeah, it's the name already says it, Creator. This is really targeted at content creators. Um, it's gorgeous. They will mostly benefit from uh, third generation Ryzen thread or CPUs. Um, so we think they're like the, the persons that are most interested in buying high-end desktop platform. Um, yeah, I personally really like the design. I don't know if you yeah, like it's, it as it's, well. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, I was just considering the fact that it's so heavy, man. There's yeah, so many it's, parts it's on there. <laughs> also, later on, we'll talk about the cooling more because that's where a lot of the weight comes from. And it's got a lot of phases as well, right? I mean, yeah. To help. Uh, Definitely. So, to you know, harness all that power. Yeah. And Threat Ripper gives. Cool. Uh, let's dive into this model, because you already talk, touched on it a little bit. The phases. This motherboard has a direct 16-phase VRM design with 70 amp power stages. Yeah. So let me so see if I can point them out. They're all way under here. You're also an overclocker, mm -hmm. and you also do sub-zero overclocking, right? Yeah, so sure. So what does a powerful VRM mean to you? Well, it ensures you know your uh, system remains stable, even though you're pushing so many volts and amps through the system. Because what can um, a CPU like this draw if you put it, for example, under liquid nitrogen, stuff like that? Yeah, we saw some really crazy numbers, but um, I'll let the overclockers decide on uh, what they see typically on these parts. Um, what we see is uh, there's a lot of headroom, if you want. Um, obviously, these are not... Um, you know, similar to an AM4 CPU, but there is some, some headroom to play with for these CPUs. I think you also have an internal overclocker already showing oh, yeah, that. Yeah, some result for that. Yeah. And that's also why it has, for example, two 8-pin power connectors to make sure also if you're doing overclocking with this, um, yeah. you will still be able to draw enough power from your power supply to the motherboard. I still haven't played with LN2 on Threadripper yet, so that's why I can't answer that question on the amps. But you should have I how many are, saying, these are rated for, right? The bottom looks bowed. Eric, did you touch this motherboard? No. I think Eric I bent just, it. I just typed in the chat. Don't ask uh, them. It's probably Eric. If stuff is broken, it's usually yeah. Eric. I hope it still works because later on we will also install this and do a demonstration with it. I told him not to touch it, but usually he ignores me. Uh, so <laughs> I hope it still works. We'll find out later on. So yeah. overclocking, our, uh, we already uh, provided this motherboard to an overclocker and um, he did some sub-zero overclocking with it. I see we made a nice typo there because it says 3870X, but it's the <laughs> 3970X, obviously. Yeah. So this is 5.7 gigahertz on uh, the 32 core processor. So the, the highest uh, model right now. That's insane. I yeah. mean, uh, I'm now really looking forward to having some time to play around with LN2 on this one as well. But yeah. please note, this is under extreme cooling. Um, you will not get these kind of frequencies when running an air cooling or water cooling. So this is really ni liquid n uh, nitrogen cooling. So it's it's really extreme. Um, so this is really for the enthusiasts, like Martijn, for example, who do overclocking like this. So yeah, if you have the right power delivery and the right CPU, you can get a crazy amount of performance out of these processors. Yeah, if you're a prosumer or uh, you know using this for a day-to-day -day business, I wouldn't recommend doing that. <laughs> no, no, this is not for 24/7. No, definitely not. 
Uh, Baltic Seal saying hashtag blame Eric. Yeah. Yes, Eric always gets the blame if something is broken. If we can he make that trending, that. that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get that Put trending. Put it on Twitter. Yeah. If something is broken, hashtag blame Eric. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, there, so uh, we've got a question in chat. Oh, Hussein, asking, is blaming, Hussein uh, Hani is blaming me. He says, poor Eric. Oh. Michiel blame Eric to get away with it. <laughs> yeah, so I, I noticed a question, uh, Michiel, in the chat. Marek is asking, uh, there's only two NVMe drives on this board? Well, I definitely think there's more. Right? Yeah. On the board itself, already three, but we have more to show later on. So, yeah. so there's three M.2s on the board and then some more details to be shown later. Definitely. Okay, okay. I have it, Eric. I have it. I have it. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, the uh, Creator TRX40, you already mentioned the weight of it. It's, yeah. it's very heavy, and that has to do with the cooling on this, because the VRM, for example, if you uh, do extreme overclocking with it, the VRM will heat up, so you need sufficient cooling. Um, so that's actually why we have a lot of different cooling techniques in this motherboard. Let's show it up close as well. If the closed camera is working. Yeah. Blame will. Eric. Blame, hashtag blame Eric. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So what you see right here on top is uh, a stacked fin array uh, heatsink. So you have like all separate fins here. So it's not just one big block of aluminum. Um, so this will give you... Air uh, is actually pushed through. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, through so the that's also, heat pipe. If you use this kind of cooling, make sure you have airflow in your case because you want to push the hot air out of here as well. So... Um, as uh, Martijn already mentioned, you, uh, it's recommended to use water cooling either all-in-one or custom. Make sure you have sufficient airflow in your case so you can also cool your VRM, especially if you put a lot of heavy load on it. Um, but this will give you uh, um, a lot of uh, uh, yes, like space to dissipate the heat, bigger than when you have one solid block of, of aluminum. Then on this side, we also have extended heat sink, so also it gives sure. you... Yeah. A bigger surface area. Yeah, maybe from the top is better. So here you have the stacked fin heatsink, and there you have the extended heatsink cooling. Yeah, so they're connected and through they're the connected heat pipe with that the you heat can pipe. Exactly. do the close up camera, Eric, real quick. So and you see this heat pipe right here, right? That's the one connecting those. So two. the heat will actually be spread all over the stacked fin heatsink and the extended heatsink. Yeah. So you have, have a lot of cooling for your VRM. And then you have another one right here, right? Exactly. That's uh, for the chipset. We have frozer heatsink, so you will see there's a small fan on there as well. Well, it's actually for a chipset fan. It's it's actually rather large. Um, yeah, but that's only usable when you are actually using all exactly. those PCI Gen 4 lanes at the same time. Yeah, so. because it has zero frozer technology. So if yep. the temperature allows it, the uh, fan will actually stop spinning. So it'll only spin up if it actually needs cooling. And this will also because it's interconnected to the um, M.2 Shield Frozer um, SSD cooling, it will also help to cool the SSDs. Um, and this is actually not the regular uh, M.2 Shield Frozer, but it's dual-sided. Because nowadays, this also supports PCI Express Gen 4, and nowadays on these kind of SSDs, uh, you see that they're double-sided. So they have chips on top and on the bottom of the SSD. Uh, so to provide the best cooling, there is cooling on the bottom and on the top um, of the SSD. So even if you put extreme workloads on it, if you just did a render of uh, 100 gigs and you're transferring it, that's quite demanding on your uh, SSD, but it will prevent it from throttling with the additional cooling. Um, then we also have the extended audio cover right here. There, this is also completely made from aluminum. Yeah, I'll show it. So it also helps to it's spread the heat because right? yeah. it will give you an even bigger surface area to dissipate the heat from. Cool. Merrick is saying both A-pin power connectors are on the right. That's correct. Um, that's for easy access if you're doing your cable management. So let me put this board up so people get an idea. Yeah. So they're so over right here, yeah. two eight pins. Because yeah. usually if you build it into a case, you have your cables coming out of the back right here. So you can stick them right in and you don't have to get past the uh, VRM cooling. Easy cable management. Easy cable management. Cool. So summarizing. Stacked fin heat sink, extended heat sink, heat pipe cooling, um, the aluminum uh, audio cover, frozer heat sink, and dual sided M.2 shield frozer. So there's a ton of. Oh, I actually forget something. I thought this was all, but maybe turn it around. Mm. Because behind the VRM, there is also 
I'm not sure if you can see it. Maybe yeah, I like that. It's easier. There's also an aluminum backplate. So um, the VRM has, of course, 16 it's power stages right there. Right here, right? Yeah. yeah, and directly under the power stages, there is an additional aluminum backplate to dissipate the heat from the back as well. Yeah. So there's so much cooling going on. I wonder, does it come with ice cubes? <laughs> <laughs> it might create them here. Okay. <laughs> No, but it should be plenty to uh, harness the power of a 32-core yeah. uh, Threadripper 30 Exactly, generation. and yeah. even for extreme overclocking, this is the way to go. Yeah. Um, talking about the fan, because there is still a little bit of fan uh, anxiety, pretty much. We have so many fans <laughs> yeah, in <because> the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but fans in the past, like if you remember the really old um, chipset fans, they were extremely small and extremely noisy. Mm -hmm. um, also, they didn't stop under idle, so they were always spinning and always at a very high pitch. Um, we developed the fan further to reduce noise. So, of course, we have zero frosted technology. So, if your system is under idle or, um, well, even under load, if you're using a limited amount of I.O., then it will not spin at all. But if it starts spinning, it's still very silent as well. It's it's five centimeter fan, so it's quite big for a chipset fan. Um, but it also has propeller blade technology. So, you have on the propellers on the fan, um, we use different kind of techniques to create maximum airflow with minimum noise. That's so basically the way how the fan blades are shaped, right? As exactly. Well. Yeah. It's, it's not only the shape, but also the surface of the fan. So okay. you will see that there is a glossy part on the end. Yep. Um, that will reduce friction of the air. Um, so also that will reduce noise. So still, um, it maintains the, the high cooling performance, but it will uh, do it at a very low noise level. So do you also use a wind tunnel to test, like the Formula One guys? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like an aero, aero uh, package, right? Maybe we should <laughs> contact Red Bull and yeah. use their, <laughs> their aero Yeah, but it definitely well. makes sense, uh, yeah, what, the way you explained it. And um, I think, you know, again, if you're spinning these fans up, you are using a lot of PCI lanes. So exactly. you, you have most to of the time, you won't even hear them, right? Exactly. Yeah. If you have to put a lot of stuff on there to, to make the fan active. Yeah. Um, and also, it uses double ball bearing, uh, bearings, and that's very important for durability. So in the past, you had like the, the, the sleeve bearing fan on the, the very old small fans, and they mm -hmm. spin very fast as well. So they tend to die on you after a certain uh, time of usage. With a double ball bearing, um, that's not likely at all that it will break at all, even if you use a lot of lanes, because it's extremely durable. Um, and also nowadays, because it's not spinning all the time, the chance of breaking is so much smaller. So no need for fan anxiety anymore. <laughs> fan anxiety. I used to have that because I remember the noise of the, the yeah, old chipset yeah. fans. That, yeah. was, that was bad. Yeah. We already talked about cooling on the motherboard, but of course, Cooling in your case um, is very important as well because you want, for example, um, optimum functionality from the stack fin heatsink. Uh, you do need airflow for that. So we have uh, seven system fan headers on the motherboard. Then there's also a dedicated CPU and an all-in-one pump header. Um, so they're all PWM uh, headers, so you can control them through the BIOS with fan curves. Um, there are also nine temperature sensors on there um, and three connectors for extension thermal headers. So you can have a, a separate sensor that you want to place wherever you want and connect it to the motherboard uh, for easy readout. So not only on the, uh, the motherboard itself, a lot of cooling, but also a lot of cooling options um, to put inside your case or on a test bench, like if you do extreme overclocking yeah. or whatever you want to do. Sometimes we remove it <laughs> entirely. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Depends on how extreme you go. Exactly. Um, Stardust Sonic is uh, asking a very good question. How much RAM can a TRX-40 motherboard support up to? That, that's really good timing because we were just about to talk about RAM. Um, you can go up to 256 gigabytes of RAM. And on this motherboard, um, you can actually go 3,600 megahertz and higher, even when using um, eight 32 gigabyte DIMMs. Um, so that changed compared to the previous generation. Then you had a maximum of 16 gigabyte. Now you can go up to 32 gigabytes per DIMM. So 256 gigabyte in total. Um, if you use, for example, uh, 64 gig, you can even reach over 4,000 uh, megahertz on your DDR4 speed. And that's also a huge difference compared to um, 
the previous generation uh, Ryzen Threadroopers because yep. you made a big step in, in Definitely. memory uh, Just remember that with the Infinity Fabric Clock, the, our internal clocks, um, we stay one-to-one -one ratio mm -hmm. all the way up to 3600. If you go over 3600, it will automatically decouple. So that's yeah. why our recommended specs is to stay about around 3600. Um, and if you really want to high-end memory kit because you need that frequency, yeah. uh, you would look at 4500 plus, right? I mean, yeah. there's that, that where the latency also makes sense. And there are some applications out there that actually benefit from higher frequency over the latency, you know, with Infinity Fabric. Definitely. Yep. It also incorporates DDR4 boost technology, so improved um, traces on the PCB. By using uh, many different layers on the PCB, you also avoid um, getting interference, so it will give you a clean signal. Um, What's also interesting because it's quad channel memory is how you should position the memory on your motherboard. Um, because if you want to use, for example, we would recommend to use at least four DIMMs on this because that's the only way you can benefit from quad channel memory. Maybe we can go to the top cam and yeah, show. Yeah, let's show it from the top indeed. You have four DIMMs lined there, right? I have uh, four DIMMs here. We can so demonstrate. So let's, let's install them. You want to install them? Yeah, okay. we can install them so we can show. We want to do the CPU first and then the DIMMs. Yeah. Is yeah. there some more space to install the CPU? Yeah, that's true. We can we can do the, the CPU first. So yeah. So you guys want to do the CPU first or the DIMMs? Let us know in chat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let um, the chat decide. Hashtag CPU or hashtag DIMM. Pain is saying maximum RAM overkill. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, if you um, want to 56, yeah. With 32 uh, gigabytes of memory that we're actually using today as well. Uh, so you have four times eight gigabytes. You can even go to 4,666 megahertz higher. So even extreme memory speeds are possible now also on the yeah, higher. Yeah, I think platform. those crazy overclockers already reach like 6,000 megahertz, right? Yeah, you, on DDR4. you can go it's, crazy high It's nowadays. insane, yeah. That's um, great. So CPU I see in chat, so. Yeah, go for let, CPU? yeah, let's install the CPU. All right, let me uh, you know unlock because this first. Because it's quite an interesting CPU socket. Let's yeah. let me get the camera a little bit closer. No, we will do it from the top, right? From the top. Yeah, it makes more yeah. sense because then we can Multi -angle. show. Multi-angle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, then it makes more sense to show. So, uh, so a regular socket is very easy. You flip op open a stick, you put in your CPU, and you flip it down. Yeah. So uh, you know uh, the screwdriver we talked about, which is included in the CPU box. Um, you will need it's it's a Torx 20 actually screwdriver. Uh, so you can also use if you have that screwdriver. Yeah. If you, you if you lost use, it somewhere, yeah. you can use a Torx 20. So uh, what you want to do is inside the socket, there's actually uh, numbers here that says three, two, and one. So let me try and see if we can get that on the camera. Uh, I think we yeah, can. I think you can read it. So there's a three, there's a two, and a one, and there's a way of how to, you know, uh, untighten the socket and then fasten it again, right? Mm -hmm. That's the uh, method you should follow, and it's really that easy. So anybody can do it. Basically, you just need to follow the instruction, and you're fine. So let's open up the socket. First, we uh, screw open the number three, uh, and then the number two. Yep, and then the number one. And there's already already some. So, uh, so uh, you know, automatically already pops open because there's some uh, spring loaded uh, up here as well. Then inside so it the socket, so drop on the socket. Either. Yeah. So then inside the socket, um, first of all, uh, you will find this. So this you want to move open, so you have access to the socket itself. Then uh, third you will have the CPU cover, right? To protect all those precious pins. Simply squeeze it a little bit and pull it straight up. Don't ever touch the pins inside the sockets because it's got 4,094 of them. So I, th I heard and Eric making some sound, so he made that mistake earlier. And don't <laughs> drop anything in there Don't either. drop so anything don't drop in the socket. don't drop your screwdriver, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and keep your fingers away from the pins, for sure. And don't slam your CPU directly in there. No, and, and see what we have here. And, and you remember I mentioned that you want to keep this um, this orange, uh, you know, guider around the CPU. You want to have that because you want to slide it in, basically. So remember that retention bracket we had here. You can simply slide in the CPU like this, and maybe if we go to the close-up camera, um, you'll see there's a small square here, you know, labeling where the CPU should align in the motherboard, in the socket itself. So. Just look at the socket of the motherboard, and I'll try to be careful here because I don't want to bend any pins. But if we then take the close-up camera again, you'll see at, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, maybe, yeah. Here at the top, difficult to see, but there's a really small black 
square as well, right? Or a triangle as well. So what you want to do is you want to align uh, the CPU with uh, that same icon there. So slide in the CPU slowly. Make sure it's all the way slid down and that you have, before pushing it down, actually made sure to align those um, uh, triangles here. So simply click it down, it will say click. There's not much you need to do. It doesn't seem that fastened yet, right? Because we that's still want to have, have the top cover. That's why we have the top cover. So simply close the top cover, make sure it's seated well, make sure the top cover uh, closes around the CPU, so not on top of the CPU um, IHS, so the, uh, the heat spreader basically. Uh, so when it's uh, all the way around it, make sure to fasten the screws again, and you'll see on the, on the socket itself it says one, two, three, instead of three, two, one. When so we follow lose, the numbers. Follow the numbers and you should be fine. So what I normally do is I uh, fasten it a little bit. So I make sure that, um, you know, the screws are actually uh, gripping and already starting to uh, screw it down. So you'll see that sometimes this can be a little bit difficult, but you'll feel some resistance and you know the screw is actually tightening. So then I go to number two. And the great thing about this particular um, screwdriver and this particular tools is the fact that when you you can't over tighten it really so what i do now is it will click so if i push this any further it will automatically click so screw screw now i feel it getting tightened more and then you hear that that's a sign that you need to stop tightening it and basically you can't overdo it so that's so the great. tool will tell you how far you should yeah, and it, that, that's enough to have the CPU seated well inside the socket, make sure that the contact with all the pins is there, and then uh, you, you're never over-tightening it or, you know, damaging, possibly damaging something. Okay, click. So now we're done with the CPU, basically. Iron so Box is saying, need this implemented for AM4 sockets. <laughs> oh, really? Well, if you want 4,000 pins on AM4, <laughs> that's difficult. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically that easy, so it's not something... Uh, that's really terrifying to do. You just got to make sure you don't damage any pins. And yeah, that's the most uh, difficult part. So be careful, follow the instructions, and then you should be good. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you were talking about memory. So maybe it's some, um, uh, I'm not sure if, yeah, we can remove it later if we yeah. want to install the cooler. Make so. a little bit of space. I have four memory games, and that's like the uh, minimum amount we would recommend when using AMD Ryzen Threadripper, because you have four memory channels on the CPU, opposed to the two you have on the mainstream platform. Um, so here it does make a difference if you go for a kit with only two DIMMs or a kit with four DIMMs. Um, it's always recommended to go with four DIMM. Uh, of course, eight is perfect as well because then two, there will be two DIMMs per channel, um, will also be fine. But you need at least four DIMMs to benefit from the quad channel memory. And it's very important how you install them um, because each memory lane is attached to different memory slots. Uh, so if we're going for four modules, we go for the first the outer ones, Always take a look at the inside of the module. Let me show it up close. So you put it in the right way. And if you have, for example, an AM4 motherboard, they will all be in the same direction. Most of you guys know this, but it's something uh, yeah, that it's, we, we it's need to highlight. It's different on this because um, it's not they will all face the same direction because when you continue here, sure. they will face the other direction. So that's something to keep Yeah, it's mirrored, on. basically. Yeah, exactly. So you always want to open uh, the memory slot first always before you push first. something down. Exactly. You want to make sure that the ledges are actually open. Um, and there's actually printing on the PCB as well. It's located right there. And there you can see which modules you should install first. So it actually says first on it um, for four modules. Just remember outside in, basically, right? Exactly. And then skip one and then the yeah, second so one. Yeah, so that's very important to skip one because otherwise you will be in the same memory channel. So we have one on the outside, then we skip one memory slot. Um, we put on the next one, click it twice. And then on the other side, you flip it because then the shorter end will be on the top part. Again, one in the outer one. And really, uh, you know, basic advice for this, if it doesn't feel right, don't put too don't, much pressure no. on it or... Don't push it Then further. you either made a mistake or you're not seating it well. There's something going on that, you know, you don't need force to push memory modules in. Exactly. Basically. So now you have them installed. So you see from the outside, skip one, 
another one and here also from the outside skip one and the other one so now we have channel one channel two channel three channel four which makes quad channel memory so this, right. is, this is very important if you want maximum performance from your Threadripper CPU because if you install this uh, the wrong way it will work but you will only run dual channel for example because you're only benefiting from two memory channels and yeah that's a pity because Threadripper offers four so make use of them yeah definitely want four modules or eight yeah right with eight it's easy you just fill you up can't all make the, all a mistake on eight. with eight you cannot make the mistake <laughs> no. exactly um you want to put is, the cooler on or everyone's asking is there also water cooling on ram modules which is the maximum capacity um yeah. these don't have uh they're not meant for water cooling but they are available and i think you also have like separate blocks for custom yeah water definitely cooling. like uh, those enthusiast blocks are available yeah. from all, all your favorite cooling vendors yeah. uh, they should have like um, uh, water cooling ram uh, blocks as well so but check with the four memory or vendor eight it, it really depends on uh, no and you can basically install them on any type of memory you just need yeah, to remove the yeah but sometimes you vo uh, void the warranty sure, so sure. that's sure. something to yeah. keep in mind if you that's with anything up. you do on the extreme side yeah. or water cooling sometimes you you end up you know sometimes voiding warranty so that's um, something to keep in mind. Um, yeah. But if you don't worry about that, then sure, you can open it up. You will have like the naked memory module and you can put a water block on there. Yeah. Um, and that's not restricted to capacity, by the way. So uh, you can go up to 32 gigabytes per DIMM um, yeah. also with water cooling. Um, yeah, so we have CPU and memory installed. Yeah, you want to take on. off the bench, the test bench, and then put I this on there? I will go later on. First, oh, really? we'll show okay. some more of the motherboard. Oh, sure. Because um, we're... Already had a question about the M.2 slots. We have uh, three on the motherboard itself. Um, so let me show it up close. Because they're here on the bottom, you will have one, you will have two, and here on the side, you will have number three. Um, and what's interesting about this is that um, the bottom two, they're attached to CPU lanes. This one is attached to chipset lanes. All of them, however, are PCI Express Gen 4. So. For that, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just so you know. The, <laughs> all of them also offer um, the same uh, uh, number of lanes. So they will all have four Gen 4 lanes. So they will offer the same speed, but this one's attached to the chipset and these two to um, the CPU. Um, but this is only three M.2 SSDs. And yes, it is a creator motherboard targeted at content creators and usually they're a little bit tricky people on storage because they use a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's also why we have an additional adding card right here. So this is the M.2. I can hold it. Yeah, that's fine. Let's show it up front. So this is the M.2 Expander Aero Gen 4 card. Um, so like a graphics it, card. Yeah, it looks <laughs> a bit like our Aero ITX graphics cards. Um, cool. On our um, MEG X399 Creation, for example, um, we also had the M.2 Expander Arrow card, but that was only Gen 3. This one also supports Gen 4, and it has four additional M.2 slots. Um, so all of them are Gen 4. Yeah, uh, I can see them right here in the yeah. close-up if you... Yeah. So if you're interested on the inside, um, in our previous live stream, we also sh have shown... So here the, you see all those four, right? Yeah. Four we have shown the inside as well, so it fits four... Um, actually up to uh, 110 millimeter SSDs. So also the very long ones, usually they're 80 millimeters, yeah. but you also have 110, they will also fit. So either one is fine. Um, what's very interesting about this card as well is you have two small switches here, right there. Um, one is to switch off the status LEDs right here, and the other one is to switch off the fan, because not all fans need active cooling. Mm -hmm. You might prefer the passive cooling, and if your temperatures are fine, you can just switch it off, because there's quite a big heat sink underneath the fan as well. So in most situations, that will be um, sufficient already for cooling. Uh, and it has a separate uh, six pin power connector. So the same one you will see on graphics card cards. Um, right now for uh, current SSDs, you will have enough power from, um, from the PCI Express slot, but maybe in the future, you never know what comes um, it might be that PCI Express SSDs, as they go uh, faster, they might also consume more power. So just to be sure, um, it can draw enough power. It can also draw power from a six-pin connector there. So here you see it from the inside as well. So um, the cooling is very interesting as well. Um, 
it uh, doesn't get the the heat doesn't get stuck in your case so it drags the air in through the fan then th underneath the shroud it will pull it outwards so it will go outside of your case and um, that's also why in the bracket you will see holes so let's show it from the side so very much similar to yeah. um like a closed cooler on a exactly a it's a bit car. like a blower cooler blower, blower style, style. Yeah, exactly yeah. so we'll draw it through and uh, exhaust it here oh. outside of the case it's nice for content creators of course expandability is, is extremely important not only on the motherboard itself of course with um with the m.2 up to seven m.2 slots we're also a ton of pci express gen 4 lanes um, but also on the io so if we turn this to the side you'll see it has a very extensive io um, and i want to point out a few things on this io because you see it has two LAN ports right there this one intel gigabit LAN, but this one is an aquantia 10 gigabit LAN um, network card in there so especially important for content creators who are transferring huge video files especially if you do 8k video editing stuff like that they can really add up quite fast. Um, if you want to transfer it, for example, to a NAS or a server, um, you'll benefit from higher network speeds. That's why it also comes with Wi-Fi 6 connectivity. Um, I think most people, if they have um, the opportunity, will use wired um, a network, especially for content creation. Um, but maybe you're on the go, you have to do uh, a project somewhere else and you don't have a wired connection then you can still use wi-fi ax connectivity uh, wi-fi which is wi-fi 6 uh, old name ax new name 6 um, which is around three times faster than wi-fi 5 which was previously known as wi-fi ac so a little bit complicated with all the renamings and when talking about renamings usb is also quite good at that oh <laughs> yeah so um we already had on our x399 creation uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 um, that was up to 10 gigabits per second this one also has USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2 a little bit of a complicated name but it essentially means super speed USB 20 gigabit per second wow. uh, so double the speed compared to regular Gen 2 um, you guys are not leaving anything on the table man no exactly so if much you need going fast data motherboard. transfer then this is definitely the way to go so fast land fast wi-fi and fast usb and that's why this board is called the creator right the creator so there's so exactly. much for those content creators yeah it's want. really targeted at content creators um and of course audio boost um not only with the analog connectors also um the sp diff uh, output on there um so all kinds of different um audio devices that you would want to use, you can easily connect it to this motherboard. All right. Edwin K is asking, does it have Nehemic sound enhancer? Yes, it does. It has support for Nehemic. Let's see if there are any other questions. Does the motherboard uh, have a 10 gig network card? Uh, uh, yeah, oh, you touched on that, right? Yeah, it yeah, has right. a 10 gigabit network card a question, and a one right? gigabit Intel network yeah. card. So um, yeah. two network cards on there. Um, then Mystic Light. Gotta go RGB. Gotta go All RGB, the way. definitely. So, um, the motherboard, it, it is targeted at content creators, so we don't want to make like uh, one big fantasy fair. A carnival, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> carnival. Um, but we have some subtle RGB on there. Um, so it is on the extended heatsink. Um, you have, yeah, it's, yeah, it looks a bit like a diamond, pretty much. And yeah, it has a cool has RGB effect on there. Um, can display 16.8 million different colors. So whichever color you prefer best, it's probably in there. Um, it also has different effects. Um, and uh, what we got from feedback from the community is um, an easy way to switch it off. Because <laughs> uh, previously you had to install software to switch off your RGB lighting. Um, now it's easier, you can just go into your BIOS uh, and switch off essentially the hardware instead of software wise yep. so very easy just one click in your bios and your rgb lighting will be, will be off um i have everything in orange yeah with ryzen right exactly so i got a cool orange setup with it <laughs> nice so yeah. you would leave it on and then definitely orange and just orange right 
Yeah, I think one. with 16.8 million colors, you have different kinds of orange to choose from. Yeah, so I know, but a plain orange is good for <laughs> okay. syncing with Ryzen, right? So not switching yeah. like on Monday, different no, kind of orange no, than on no. Tuesday? No. Hey, <laughs> by the way, I saw a nice question uh, from Edwin K. Which sound chip does it have? A Realtek or a Creative? Or it has the the, um, the Realtek 1220. Okay. So top tier uh, onboard uh, audio chipset. Um, Hearth Junkie is saying no RGB, then no one buys. Yeah, yeah, like to get the best performance, you need RGB. Everyone knows that. <laughs> if, it, if there's no RGB, it doesn't perform, right? Yeah, maybe next time we implement RGB on the CPU. Exactly. Yeah. We actually had also uh, some advice in our chat that we should make RGB thermal paste. Wow. Because that will cool a lot better than regular. Thermal. Maybe RGB boxes. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool as well. Yeah. Um, if you're into RGB, you have more options than just the RGB on the motherboard itself. You can also um, connect your external RGB devices to the motherboard. And there are actually four headers on this motherboard. So let's go through them. Um, right here. Let me clean this up. Yep. There is a dedicated J Corsair RGB header. So that's specifically for Corsair products. Then we have J Rainbow. Uh, let me see, and JRGB right here. It has two J Rainbow connectors, and J Rainbow stands for the addressable RGB connector. So addressable RGB means you can display multiple colors at the same time. Um, so you have two of those. Of course, you can use a hub to get even more. Um, JRGB is like the regular old school type of RGB. Um, so you also have many different colors, but it can only display one color at the same time. So if you want to have like the fancy effects in your LED strips with rainbows of, or fancy effects in your fans, then you need addressable headers. Make sure um, to use the right header for the right device. So if your device supports JRGB, use the JRGB header. If your device supports addressable RGB, use either the Corsair header if it's a Corsair product or um, the J Rainbow header if it uses the, the standard type of RGB header. Um, they use different voltages, so don't connect it to the wrong header because you will <laughs> break your product then, and that will be a pity. Or the board. Or the board. Nah, I think, I think your product okay, will die okay. sooner than your board. Uh. But just don't try it out. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> What's also different uh, between our gaming and our creator series with our gaming motherboards, of course, we have Dragon Center software, um, which is a nice implementation of all kinds of different software into one program. Um, for content creators, we have uh, Creator Center. And Creator Center is, especially, the name already says it, interesting for content creators um, because you can um, use, for example, specific cores or specific threads and designate them to certain programs. For example, if you use Adobe Premiere, you can say, I want uh, this number of cores or this number of threads specifically running Adobe Premiere while um, dedicating other cores to other programs. So you can really define priority of your programs by assigning a certain number of cores. And you have quite a number of cores to assign on <laughs> these generation of thread per processors. Um, you also, of course, have your uh, different monitor uh, functionality in there. You can see your CPU usage, GPU usage, uh, RAM usage, all that kind of stuff. You can put in custom fan curves for your cooling. Um, so a lot of things you can uh, control through the Creator Center software. I think Merrick had a question about what's the difference between the TRX40 Creator and the TRX40 Pro. That's a good question. And that's our next topic as well. <laughs> good timing, Merrick. Um, because this is the Creator TRX40. That's our top tier TRX40 motherboard. Um, we also have the TRX40 Pro motherboard, and that one comes in two different varieties. We have the TRX40 Pro 10G and the TRX40 uh, Pro Wi-Fi. And the name already says a little bit what the difference is. Um, the TRX40 Pro 10G comes with this card included in the box. And that's a 10 gigabit network card. So let me see if we can get it up close. We got Eric to wake up. Eric, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Eric is awake again. So this is a 10 gigabit network card. Um, the board itself already comes with two times one gigabit LAN. With this one, you have a third network connection, which is 10 gigabit. The TRX Pro uh, Wi-Fi comes with uh, Wi-Fi 6 um, integrated on the motherboard itself. Um, so it depends a bit on what kind of working environment you have, what you prefer. Um, and both of them also come with um, 
Lambda 2, Expander Z Gen 4, which we'll show later on as well. So any anything on oh, power phases? <laughs> that power would be phases. my question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's answer your question. Yeah, okay, so what okay. was your question with that? How many power phases does it have? Is it any different than the creator? It's uh, yeah, it is different, but it's still an extremely powerful VRM design. Um, it's a 12 plus three phase, so you have 12 phases dedicated for the CPU. Um, so on the creator TRX40, we had a 16 phase direct 16 phase VRM um, with 70 amp power stages. Um, this one has only 12 phases, which is still a lot, but it has 90 amp power phases. Um, so still an extremely powerful VRM design. Um, and they're actually extremely new and very efficient power stages as well, completely digital power stages. So um, also for heavy load, um, for longer periods of time, no problem at all. Um, it also comes with dual A-pin power connectors, so uh, to make sure you can draw enough power from, uh, from your power supply or you can even use multiple power supplies for load balancing as well. Seems plenty to me. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, as you can see on the, the cooling, it offers both the stacked, feed uh, stacked fin heatsink on the top, uh, directly on the CPU phases, with the heat pipe connected to the extended heatsink design uh, on top of the I.O. All right. Then M.2, um, we had up to seven on the Creator TRX40, um, the uh, TRX40 Pro has up to, uh, four, can handle up to four M.2 SSDs. Two of them can be placed on the motherboard itself. Both of them are attached to CPU lanes. Um, and it comes with the M.2 Expander Z Gen 4 adding card. This is comparable, uh, comparable to the M.2. Uh, so you have this one. Yeah, Expander Arrow. Yeah, this is the high-end one with four the, slots, yeah. basically. And this one offers two additional M.2 slots. It's also Gen 4, so it will give you the same bandwidth as the M.2 SSD you place on your motherboard. Um, so it uses eight lanes. Um, the other one uses 16 lanes, the one with four SSDs, of course. But with, um, with the TRX40 platform, that's not really a problem. You have plenty of lanes to, to use for that. Hey, and do you sell these separately, or do they not only come point. with the board? They, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. They come included uh, with the board. Yeah. You also need the BIOS support is really important for this. So, for example, um, the TRX uh, uh, 40 Pro will also have BIOS support for um, the Expander uh, Arrow card, so the bigger one, um, but it might not work on other boards. Okay. So, with the TRX 40 boards, you're good to go with whichever one you prefer to use. Yeah. Um, but it's not like this will work on all motherboards. So okay. the feature has to be embedded in the BIOS. All right. Yeah, so here you see the two uh, M.2 slots on the board itself. And as you can see, the cooling is also attached to the frother heating. So again, the fan can help to cool your SSDs as well, because it's one uh, piece of cooling. So the airflow of the fan will help there. Oh. Both of these boards, so both the Creator TRX40 and the TRX40 Pro have uh, easy BIOS recovery. So on the, I can also show it on the board itself. I love this. On the I.O., you have two buttons. Eric, <laughs> <laughs> wake up. <laughs> you have two buttons on the side. So, oh, yeah, it's really heavy. The one on the top there is a clear CMOS button, so you can easily uh, reset your BIOS. Uh, you don't have to enter your case if it's built inside. You can just go to the back of your case, press the button, and you will reset your BIOS. The bottom one is the flash BIOS button. Um, and that's to easily flash your BIOS um, without even having to install your CPU or your graphics card or your VGA. You only have to install um, your power connector, um, both the 24-pin and the 8-pin. Um, then you put in the, the USB uh, key. You have to put it in the right um, USB connector. You will see it on the I.O. There is a square around it. Hello, Eric. Eric is asleep all the time. Maybe Wake close up. up. <laughs> yeah. Right there, you see a white square around the USB port. And that's. Too many people in the chat, you don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have to put it in there because if you use a different port, it will not uh, flash from the USB stick. Um, so you flash the, press the uh, flash BIOS button, and it will, um, if you put in the file with the right naming on the USB key, it will flash directly from the USB stick. 
uh, CJ Bill oh. is saying, are those messages meant for chat in an artist streaming service? We're streaming actually to multiple platforms. So we're streaming to Twitch, we're streaming to YouTube, oh, yes, um, oh, yes. we're streaming to Facebook, uh, uh, all the different Mixer. So a lot of different kinds of platforms. So yes, the chat is all integrated. So we can also all read it at once here. Let me see if I can make this a little bit quicker. Um, so. Will there be an MSI AMD SSD again? We haven't made any SSDs yet, so maybe for the future, I don't know. Could be an idea, but we haven't done that so far. We, there are no uh, MSI SSDs so far on the market. Perhaps in the future. Perhaps in the future. You never know. Cannot promise anything. Uh, I think they just want to see us live demo this. I mean, that's... Yeah, yeah. Uh, just CJ Bill on. saying, I definitely accidentally pressed those buttons when reaching around to swap cables. <laughs> you might reset your BIOS if you press it, but you do have to press it properly to reset it. It's not that if you just touch it very lightly that it will uh, you gotta reset. You've got to press directly. it for at least two to three seconds before yeah. it does something, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's not that you accidentally press it very easily. I haven't encountered that so far. Um, so yeah, let's install this. Sure. Because, uh, Are you having any more slides or you want to go on? And yeah, we have like a comparison. Yeah, so if you want see. to compare them side by side, yeah, you see there are some similarities, um, but also some differences. All right, so you set this up the way you do it. I'll talk through it because uh, I want to discuss something about the actual bracket, which comes in the box. You want to handle this? Yeah. All right, so um, seeing from the top or something at the front, um, I think the top is better right now. Can we do the top, Eric? Yeah. So anything here. So this bracket is also included with the CPU to allow you to install your favorite AIO cooler, which you already have, for example, on an X399, compatible with Socket STR4, which you can then use on Socket STR X4 as well. Mm -hmm. um, is, this one is also already I connected. I have one installed on this uh, only one water cooler. Yeah, th that's already installed yeah. on the cooler itself, so you don't need to use this one right now. So you see the bracket. Indeed, but then you at least know that it's coming with the CPU as well. We have one question, I think. JLM is asking, I want to buy a budget case based game PC. I wondered if a Ryzen 2600 and an MSI Radeon RX 588 gigabit armor OC graphics card uh, work well together. Yeah, that's actually a very good combination. Um, and especially right now, you can get really good deals on the Ryzen uh, 5 2600 and the RX 580. Uh, so for a more entry level build, that's, that's definitely a very good option. All right. Um, Edwin is asking, why are there no MSI speakers? I think we used to have them. Yeah, I think that's a very long time ago that we that we had them. But that's that, those were only like the, the office kind of speakers. Very, very simple, very basic. So maybe also an idea for the future. Again, I cannot promise anything, but maybe some smart, I'll look into smart it. Smart home speakers from MSI. <laughs> sounds good, sounds yeah. good. <laughs> Hello, MSI. And yeah, <laughs> okay, on. MSI, and then... Switch on Mystic Light. Turn on my TRX-40 <laughs> Beast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, Merrick is asking, so can I say the creator is the higher end between all three motherboards? Yes, the creator is the top model, exactly. Um, let me find the thermal page, man. I don't know where we left that. I have that right oh, here. Oh, okay. So you go ahead, man. Do it, install it. Um, you want to use this one? Yes or no? No uh, right now, now we only have two SSDs installed, okay. so right now we don't need it. You only have two SSDs. You make it sound SSDs. you make it sound like we're poor. Like <laughs> we only have two SSDs. So important with Threadripper, you apply decent amount of. Yeah, you can do a little bit more. Even more. Even more. I think this is quite a lot already. Uh, for, like Eric. for Threadripper, almost like Eric does. Okay. Just a little bit before Eric, you know. Continues. Stop because it's, there. Yeah, it's, it's a big die, so you also need yeah. more thermal paste than you would with AM4. Yeah. Um, and also, because you have the chiplet design, there are actually different core chips in different places. So Correct. if you don't cover one side properly, then you will not cool a certain chiplet, and you will overheat certain cores. Yeah, and remember, your, your cooler, if you buy it new, already comes with uh, thermal paste pre-applied on the block. So you don't need to apply this the same way we just did. Yeah, it depends um, a bit on what you get. Yeah, it depends on the coolers you get, but most of them actually yeah. have some thermal paste already pre-applied. For example, if you have like um, a custom water cooling, that always comes yeah. without. 
Yeah, then you need to do apply it yourself. And normally we would use like the gray stuff. Um, I'm not a big fan of the white stuff, but yeah. So maybe you can hold the radiator sure. because we don't have it attached right I'll here. I'll move right here, right now. So I will Let's push back the on. gables to the side. And the good thing is today we also have... Oh, you want yeah, to swap let's it? swap it around, it's right. easier. We also have a 3950X with us, right? Yeah, so this is the 32 core, the new third gen Ryzen Threadripper processor. I had a screwdriver somewhere. Yeah, on the side, I can hold it. It's a little bit easier. Normally you can do this by yourself, by the way, just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, but now because the radiator is not inside the case, it's a little bit yeah, it's harder flex. because it's the radiator drags the, the tubes away. It's flexing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you want to make sure you have proper amount of uh, mounting pressure on the CPU. Yeah, and uh, that's actually very easy about this um, type of mounting. You have screws here inside, so it's you can just use your screwdriver to tighten them properly. Yep. You what feel. What kind of thermal paste do you use? Good question. That's, that's a very good question. <laughs> I think this. Is <laughs> toothpaste. It's some toothpaste, really. From um, your uh, technical guys, we borrowed that. It's um, careful. I have no idea where KP97 it says. So that's the yeah. one. Looks like toothpaste. Let me show it up close. <laughs> that one. So tonight I use it to brush my teeth, but right now we use it to cool CPU. Cool. <laughs> Let's just okay. hope we get plenty of cooling performance. So all properly attached. Some cables, always fun. We have the one for the pump, top right header. Then we have the double connector for these fans. Yeah, when you deal with RGB, you also deal with a lot of cables. Yeah, that's the downside of you can always use scissors if you don't want RGB. <laughs> and on the side, because you see another system already running, we actually have the Ryzen 9 3950X. So the new 16 core CPU on our uh, MEG X570 unified motherboard. So later on, we'll also run some comparisons, comparisons so you can really see um, what the difference in speed in certain um, multi-core workload is between these two. So you want to do a little bit of showdown, right? Yeah. The, the most high-end part yeah. in the uh, Ryzen third gen because mainstream core desktop platform. Because sounds like a lot, but yeah. you can get even more Definitely, yeah. performance out of this. It's so much faster than anything else. I mean, if you look at the performance you get from a mainstream CPU right now, I mean, compared to several years ago, it's, uh, it's, it's really something. It's a great time to be in a computer enthusiast, right? So we have the two 8-pin power connectors. On the top right. On the right side, Unify? Yeah, it's the MEG X570 Unify. Then a graphics card is always nice to put on there as well because these don't have any integrated graphics. Right here, we have the uh, 5700 XT Radeon card. 3950X, right, Matthijs? 3950X, correct. 3950X, and this one has uh, 5700. This is the 5700 XT, um, the gaming model. And that one is the Mac. Slide it in there, power connectors for the GPU. So I know you had a couple of more slides or something you wanted to show, but yeah, you if actually you had a... something to show. Oh, yeah. Because now we have, a... we have only a 32 core CPU. Oh, let's talk about that later. Ah. Let's first do this. <laughs> let's do the showdown first. No, but I can close it, right? I mean, uh, you kept it here somewhere. Didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You okay. can just uh, put it there. So, let me close this for a bit. And then we need the power cable. Plug it in somewhere. There we go. Let's boot it up. So first time is always taking a little bit longer because all the hardware is, uh, you know, being detected for the first time. So we might have to wait a little bit before we can actually start our Let's adventure of our make comparison. Make a little bit of space here. 
Yep. Yeah, it's a bit crowded in here. It's uh, yeah. There are two rather big setups. Side by side, as brothers. Exactly. So here you have the Threadripper platform with the 3970X, which is a 32-core um, CPU on the Neo Creator TRX40 motherboard. Right here we have um, the 3950X, so mainstream platform, but still a 16-core CPU on um, the MEG X570 Unify motherboard. I'm uh, trying to add labels and text, but it doesn't look great. Oh. Eric is destroying the, <laughs> the view. He's destroying the stream. Eric, do He's you also have a side-by-side -side capture? Leave the text. People know what is what. Don't underestimate our viewers. <laughs> they will see the difference, right? And can, and can you pop up chat again? Because now we might miss some questions. Nobody left, uh, Nobody left in the chat. So, the TRX40 still not running. No, I'm not in Windows yet. I'm making sure that everything's running the way it should. Yeah, Montaigne's in the BIOS. Yep. So it's rebooting right now. At least we had a screen, so it's alive. <laughs> it is alive. Side by side? Yeah. Like I prepared something like that. <laughs> I thought you would. Showdown. AM4 versus TRX40. You know you have a studio mode on the left, right? No? Down, 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 down. There. There you go. Click it. Crashing. Click it. Woo. If the stream is suddenly gone, it was Eric. <laughs> Man, there's a clone of myself. <laughs> Um, so right now, as you can also see, we have four memory DIMMs installed on this system, two memory DIMMs on this system. As here we use dual channel, so you can put in four, of course, but you will still only have two memory channels from your CPU. On Threadripper, you have the four memory channels. Um, and I think we'll run some benchmarks later on. Yeah. So you sure. set everything in the BIOS. Yeah, you can you up. can show the CPU Z in the meantime. Yeah. Show your system setup, right? The motherboard, CPU specs, and. You know, maybe so, yeah, here you see 3950X, so this has got uh, 105 watts TDP. And TDP is a bit complicated nowadays because it doesn't necessarily say um, the power draw of the CPU. Um, because you have different kind of techniques also. Um, precision boost overdrive, for example, that will essentially automatically overclock your CPU to get the maximum performance out of this. This, is, this works with uh, different factors, so your, uh, the capability of your motherboard, but also the, the temperature, um, and it will automatically define how far it can essentially boost your CPU. Um, so it can go beyond 105 watts um, with different kind of boost techniques. Um, but of course, you can also switch those off if you want to do small form factor stuff, if you have limited cooling. Yep. Um, but to get the maximum performance, I would definitely recommend to yeah, yeah, switch the, the, those the RAID coolers out of the box are already doing a tremendous job. But if you really you know, are into enthusiast cooling solutions, yeah. we want to give those people a reward. And that reward is more performance through PBO. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's very easy to switch on. So you don't have to do any manual overclocking. You just, just switch it on and you're good to go. Yep. Uh, oh, okay. I see Eric is drawing another winner. Oh, really? So if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Our next code will be a Borderlands 3 key. He's generous today. Yeah. So our next winner is Prince Eugen, or Prima MM. Congratulations, you won a code for Borderlands 3. We will email it to you in the coming days. So if you haven't participated yet, please do so. If you already signed up for the giveaway, you don't have to do anything. You will be automatically enrolled in the other ones as well. Uh, Casual Geek TV is saying 105 watts for 16 core 32 threads is insane. Yeah, it actually is. It's uh, it's it's very very efficient if you compare it to previous generation uh, and the core count as well. Yep. 
It's a testament once again. Uh, Merrick is asking how many watts power supply are you using on a Threadripper um, setup? This it's... is a 1200 watts, yeah. and there's 850 watts in here. Uh, but you could also use the 850 watt for that one. That's for this setup. That will be fine. Yep. Uh, of course, things get different if you're going to do extreme overclocking. If we're going to do LN2, then make sure you have an extremely beefy power supply. Eric, I've set up the system, so when you're ready, we're ready to do the showdown. Not sure if you can see my screen, but no, you do, sir. Oh, I've got this open, right? Let me check, so we can. Capture this. Yeah, it sh should be okay. Um, so let's do some benching. Nope. Can you? I'm on the gray background. I, you, so. you already have me live, so I can already do a, sh a short benchmark here. So bench CPU for the CPU Z Did test. What do you think it will get? Time? Sorry, two questions at once. Uh, it's not connected to LAN. It should. Ah, that's why it doesn't work. That might help. There we go. We do our nowadays. We do our capturing through the network. Is 10G so enough? It's quite important to connect it. More than that. <laughs> <laughs> so right. we can do 8K capturing now. Let's do an 8K showdown. <laughs> yeah. uh, let me check if I've got internet now. No internet. Let me try the other port. Maybe it's a driver thing. I see some light, so that's a good sign. Yep. So, what do you think a 3950X? We've got internet now, so Eric achieve. should.